Yes, sir. Can I have your attention, please? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the July 23rd, 2019 Camden Select Board meeting. Um, we're going to start with our published agenda. The first item is public input on non-agenda items. Is anybody here who would like to speak to an item that's on, not on the agenda? Please. Allison, you turn that. Thank you. My name is Bruce Flaherty. I'm from Augusta, and I'm involved with the Spirit of America Volunteer Recognition Program. Now, as you're aware, Mainers do great things to help others, including the youth who raised $275 from hot chocolate sales to buy needy children Christmas gifts, and the police officer who saved the lives of two youths as their home was engulfed in flames. However, it's sad that people like this who do great things to help others oftentimes don't get the recognition they deserve from their local officials or from anyone else. Now, Spirit of America Foundation is a 501c3 public charity based in Augusta, uh, and it's established to encourage volunteerism. It allows the Spirit of America Foundation tribute to be presented in the name of <coughs> any main municipality to a person, project, or group for commendable community service. Now, last year, I believe 164 main municipalities picked Spirit of America winners, most we've ever had. This year, so far, as I was telling Audra, that I'm aware of at least 194 main municipalities have picked Spirit of America winners. Now, uh, it's nice that they be honored during the annual town meeting or during the month of April, which is National Volunteer Month, a time to recognize, ideally. Now, Maine Municipal Association and its current president Mary Sabins, some of you might know her, uh, have been very supportive of this program. In fact, if you were to go onto the Maine Municipal Association website and scroll down under the re recent announcements page, you should be able to find reference to this program. Also, if you were to go back to the MMA This Month email newsletter, for the month of January, you also should see mention. Mary's town, hometown of Vassalboro, she's the town manager there, is one of many communities that have been involved in this program for many years. Now, important points. There is no fee whatsoever to participate in this program. And there's a lot of information about it on a website S-P-I-R-O-A-F-T dot com. You could type in slash gems at the afterwards, but you wouldn't need to. That the first uh, string should get you there. Now, the Spirit of America uh, recipient that Camden would select this year uh, would be honored at a ceremony hosted by the Knox County Commissioners. Every year they host this event and they do a beautiful job. Now, uh, the deadline was supposed to be June 30th, but we'll give a little extension. And uh, to pick the person, project, or group to receive the 2019 Camden Spirit of America Foundation tribute. Now, I've been visiting some towns today going back and forth, and I don't have all of my notes directly in front of me, but as I remember from last night, looking, I believe your annual town report is posted on your website. I believe? Okay. <laughs> Reluctantly, nothing <laughs> alone. No, no. And, uh, Hopefully. I haven't checked. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that would still be the most recent one? 
I don't so know. Okay. I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I don't exactly remember. I was looking at That's fine. your time. That's fine. Anyway, the thought was that it's a very nice gesture and it's encouraged that it be the one to whom the annual town report is I dedicated. See. What? I see. Wow. It makes sense. Yep. Oh, let me give it one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Luckily, we chose a deserving person this time. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm sure, well, I'm sure you well, It always. is on the correct report. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Any questions you can think of? No, we'll take a look at that, and Audra will follow through on mm -hmm. um, early, early next week, yep. latest. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to give it away. Are you asking us to make a decision right now? Or we you don't, don't want to give to, away no, you don't have the, to, no, the, no. what we, we want it to be a surprise a little bit, right? Yeah, or sure. no? yeah. absolutely, absolutely, great. Okay, then, so within the, within the next few days. How's Beautiful. That? My Thank email you. address is on there and so forth. And oh. when does it get presented at the Knox County Commissioner. What they've been doing is they've been holding the event in November. It's a countywide event. Mm -hmm. Oh, not during National Volunteer Week or during annual town meetings anymore? Let me qualify. Okay. The program, and I realize you're, this is relative, completely new to most of you tonight. Um, the first step is that it's supposed to be presented by oh, okay. the local municipality. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. And then the second step is a, is a recognition at a countywide Perfect. event. Sounds okay. great. Great. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks. for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else here from the public? Obviously, no. Holly, you want to say something? <laughs> no. Um, okay. We'll go on to uh, uh, approval of the board minutes for July 9, 2019. 19th. 2019th. The only thing, the only thing I would say, um, in the discussion about cousins, I don't go there on a regular basis. I was there one time to hear music. <laughs> no, well, no, that's not what I heard. <laughs> I don't know, Mark. The Usually wear security disguise. footage doesn't lie. You're going to get support for that change. Right. No, I'm not going to. I did, I did that like that it was in there like that. Yeah, it was kind of cute, Mark. I think it's supportive. Yeah, You're there is. in spirit. Yeah. I, I, like, was, I was there one time, just and I brought that up. That I, the, all I got out of it was you like music, so it was good. I was there one time. Yeah. <laughs> Any for other music. for music? Any other comments on it? We have motion. <laughs> on, um, Minutes. Or on the, all of the above. I think only one time. That's. Are you are you pledging to go a little bit more now? I've been there more than one time. Oh Congratulations. My. Put that in the minutes. <laughs> and it wasn't the music. Everybody, how many times have we all been? Uh, Luca Fruit is a member. Second. All those in favor? 5 0. Thanks so much. Uh, select board reports. Audrey, would you like to start? I'd like to start. So I am incredibly excited to introduce everyone to our new public services director, or public works director, sorry, I, I gave you your old title. Our new public works director <laughs> as of August 19th, Dave St. Laurent. Dave's joined us here tonight to say hello to everyone. So Dave will be coming over from the city of Rockland. Um, we're really fortunate to have um, convinced Dave to come to Camden. He's very experienced. He worked for the city of Rockland as a department head for 13 years, starting out as the director of uh, the solid waste facility. He did such a good job with that. He was convinced to take on both solid waste and the um, public works functions within the city, which included not just, you know, roads and highways, bridges, parking lots, all of that infrastructure, but also he got responsibility for all of the open spaces as well as part of that job and a lot of the um, public facilities. So Dave did a great job over in Rockland. I know he's gonna do a great job in Camden and we're lucky to have him. And at the same time, we're also fortunate that we're gonna be keeping Rick Seibel because this is part of the Rick Seibel's grand plan for sort of transitioning into retirement. He's stepping into the assistant director position. So that's gonna give, you know, Dave a good opportunity to learn the job with Rick there, who's been there for a long time. And it's gonna increase some capacity within the department, which is really good because it's a big job. So we have the public works dream team here in Camden for the <laughs> mid coast. And I'm really excited about it. They've got 
you know, both of them are really skilled and they've got really good skills that complement each other. So Camden is very, very lucky to have both of these gentlemen. So do you want to get up and say hello? Yeah, I guess I'll just give a quicker introduction. I'm Dave St. Laurent. I've lived in the community for probably 16 years. I live in Rockport. Oh, excuse me. So uh, again, I'm Dave St. Laurent and I'm from Rockport. Um, I've lived there for 16 years and I've worked in municipal government for almost 13. Um, I'm super excited about this position. I look forward to working with everybody, um, as well as the residents of uh, Camden. And forgive me if I, if I uh, interchange the position titles or, that, or say town and then city and mix those up because I've been saying city for so long and now I'm going to be saying town. But I'm excited about the whole thing and I look forward to working with Rick and I think this is going to be a great thing. So thank you for the opportunity and uh, I hope to do a good job here. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. We're Welcome really happy to have you. Thank you very much. If it comes to troubles, then we can always change our charter to a city council, if you like. <laughs> oh, tell the charter commission. All right, yeah, well, I can feel I can feel the rocks already. The collective <laughs> shudder just went through the charter commission. Welcome, Dave. Welcome. <laughs> Seriously, welcome. Looking forward to having you on board. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Audra? Actually, I thought I would give a few other updates. Um, because I didn't have a chance to post my manager's report uh, in time for this meeting. Um, we've been meeting with, we met with the Coastal Mountain Land Trust to talk about permitting for the Round the Mountain Trail. And that sort of got into bigger discussions on, um, you know, where we stand in relation to site law at the mm -hmm. Snow Bowl and the fact that we're kind of on a verge where it might be wise to think about um, taking the plunge and applying for a site law permit mm -hmm. because that might, that just might make it so that going forward, we don't have to be so concerned about every little thing that we do. And a lot of those bigger concerns, you know, have already been taken care of. Can you explain what that is? Um, would you like to explain sure. the permitting process around all of that? So, um, the, Snowball Ragged Mountain has um, a stormwater permit, right? And that is for a certain number of square feet of impervious that, um, or structure that we wanted to, um, to build out there. And we did that when we did the Snowball expansion. Um, and then DEP has a Site Location of Development Act permit called SLOTA and our site law. And it's there, you get tripped into site law when you're at three acres of impervious surface or more or your development is 20 acres or more. And our development at the Snowball, when we met with um, Will, we were at about 18, maybe 19 acres of development up there. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really close and we don't really know, you know, I mean, we ought to really assess where we are because we were really close when Will looked at it back when we were doing the um, Snowball expansion. Um, site law looks at everything from water quality to natural areas to wildlife to historic preservation stuff. It's similar to Act 250 in Vermont, and California has a big site permit like that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, Maine has one, too. It's called site law, mm -hmm. and we're very close um, to hitting that threshold. And, and as Audra said, I, I would recommend um, we plan for doing that. I don't think we ought to plan for it this year would be my guess. I mean, we're, I don't think we're budgeted for it. Um, and next year we ought to plan for that. Um, that way, if the snowball needs a maintenance garage or they need a shed or they need anything, you know, we don't want to sit here every, every month or every week sitting there with parks and rec folks, making sure we're staying under this limit. So we just don't trip that threshold. I mean, we want to plan for the future out there and, and big picture, you get the permit. It's, the initial permit somewhat costly um, and involved, but after that, things are relatively easy. To smooth. Excuse me? It's usually very costly. Um, yes, but a lot of that information is readily available and a lot's already been mm -hmm. done for it. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I would suspect I would assist a firm in doing it so they don't have to do all of it. Sure. I can do some of it. It's my, How long does that my permit name. give us the ability to? Develop for that it. permit lasts forever. So anytime you do anything, you modify. Well, DEP's changed the rules. So anytime you would do anything, you would need to get either a site an amendment or a um, modification to your site law permit. Um, they have changed the rules so that um, and now it's every 10 years you're allowed a certain number of, of development square footage in a 10-year period without getting your permit. But you have to go back to the DEP to get that permit every 10 years. So. Um, 
I've worked on site law projects for a long time in Bangor. There's probably a couple dozen, maybe 30 site law permits that we reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any in Camden. Um, okay. So that's what it is. Um, it's a, a good way to plan for future development out there rather than trying to, yeah. again, not hit that threshold and do everything you can to not hit that. And that's what oftentimes a lot of people do. And that's yeah. not good planning. You know, mm -hmm. just get the permit and then everything else moves forward easily from there. Right. Okay. This is Chris Jeremy. Thank you. Next, Audrey, you have another one you said. Yep, I've got a few. Um, <laughs> uh, so one of the other things, uh, the LED street light conversion project, I wanted to give an update on that. So we're finalizing the audit. Uh, Real term sends around a person who they look at all the street lights across town. Um, you know, they cross-reference the ones that they've they've found with uh, CMP's list of the ones that we're going to purchase from them. So we're kind of in that process of making sure that CMP's list kind of jives with ours, which it doesn't always because of the fact that they use very outdated street names, some that even Rick Seibel had never heard of. So mm -hmm. it can be a um, kind of intensive process trying to look through all of that. but. The same time that's been going on, we've also been working with CMP on the acquisition part of all this, and we secured financing for the loan for that project. So really, as soon as the um, audit's done, we're able to move forward with the design part, which I think is going to be something that we need to come back to the select board or the energy committee and then the select board mm -hmm. to approve the final design, because there have been discussions over the years about reducing the number of streetlights yeah. within town. So this is going to be the time to kind of make those decisions. Um, I have, this is a street light question, but not exactly that. Can I ask? <laughs> okay. Um, have we talked at all about, I saw some of the recommendations from Roger were that the town should turn, request that street lights be turned off. If a neighborhood requests that lights be turned off because of the brown-tailed moth, that we should do that or have we looked into that at all or thought more about it or not really at this stage liked it more than spreading chemical it seemed like a sort of a reasonable idea if it was oh it'll be you know when we own them all and have control over all of them it'll be very easy for us to do um in the future could we do it now i don't really know what the process is now that cmp owns them we'd have to go through cmp I yeah guess. most of them are out already anyway. i know that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's true so is it so would the response at this point be that it's not possible or that we can check into it we can yeah i mean we can certainly look into it i i do think it's a good suggestion i i think it's one that's really it's going to be very um much within our control once we convert over once we convert over yeah. and that shouldn't converting over shouldn't take a long time either i think what we're doing now is the most labor intensive yeah and, yeah it is the yeah. survey part it's an interesting thing because people do complain about the amount of light and it's not something I think of having be in our control. Like, so the opportunity to give public input on where we want lights or not, or it could be just like opening a can of worms that we wish we had never even brought up, or it could be a really I positive think, thing yeah, for the community. I think there's going to need to be some policy around yeah, what you want to do because. Well, there's also the thing called safety. And that, and by the way, also CMP and others, there are some jurisdictions that we still won't control, like Route 1 which has to be, uh, be, for example, to be, I'm not sure if any of these are on Route 1 or, or 105 or any of those roads, they have to follow AASHTO standards. So it gets complicated, but- Well, exactly, like what's in our control and what isn't. Exactly, that's what, we, what we, is... we can do that. We can do that, especially if we get control of most of them ourselves, then our world's better off. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. So, and that'll be a discussion I have yeah. with Dave, yeah. is how we do that because, you know, there's- Yeah. You know, options much like with the um, downtown street lights, sure, for sure, Rome system and all of that. Oh, yeah, don't get me started. Yeah, I, I know. Um, <laughs> so keep, keep you'll going. just be able to control your street light from an, from an app on your iPhone. You I think actually can. you can vote via the app, all right? I, I mean, I think there's you know, varied opinions that between I'm neighborhoods sure. on what they want, yes. so yeah, absolutely. I think that probably I don't even know where I stand. And, and there, that's the thing, but there'll be some neighborhoods where there's some division. And all the Grand Hill Moss will be in the other neighborhoods. Right. <laughs> How does this all work? The well lit neighborhoods. Yeah, everybody has to wear green <laughs> shirts on Fridays. <laughs> so, anyway, I think having some consistency will be really important. I agree. Right. Um, municipal bug zappers. There you go. 
So my, my last one, I wanted, to, I wanted to draw attention to all the work that's been done on the McGonagall River restoration. And also, I think Allison deserves some real credit here because she has been working tirelessly getting a um, pretty major grant submitted to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. I've been at, working on it too. Not as much as Allison. Mm -hmm. That's but, true. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it was a real Herculean Absolutely. effort, and Absolutely. Allison got the grant in that was due at midnight last night. At, I think it was 11:47 when he got the confirmation oh, email. Even with time to spare. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Right. It's hard not to use like the last little bit of time. Like, mm -hmm. can I switch out a photo? Could I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you, Alice. Great work. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I, it's really if you know if we're if we get funding it's going to be a great project it's going absolutely, to be absolutely. so important for kicking this all off thanks again i mean we've and we the thing is we've to try to make the case for it it's caused us to learn a whole lot and i mean mm -hmm. i've never cared really about the knox county hazard mitigation plan it's kind of been one of those things that yeah. it's like oh whatever but the more you start learning about like the dams for instance and you start l really looking at the flood zones and it's extremely alarming that all of the Knox Mail, our new parking lots, all of that is in the 100-year flood zone. Mm -hmm. Mechanic Street, right next to, to Knox Mill. So if you think about what that means, if there actually were flooding there, that wouldn't just be like a big pool of water. That's a sloped road. So you would have sheet flooding in downtown Camden coming from the Knox Mill. And that's just, I mean, we're going to get a 100-year storm before too long. Even a 50-year storm did it a lot of damage so it's um there's definitely a lot a lot to the whole thing and um it's one of those rabbit holes you can go down and just keep learning but thank you jenna do you have anything to add i actually i have something that i'm interested in talking about but i think i'm going to talk to randy about it before i present it to the board no problem no <laughs> just sort of I, i'm just kidding you do what you want it, yeah i do want to talk to randy yeah. to be sure about your choice, yeah your choice marco uh, a number of things. Uh, number one, I was at a CDAC meeting yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, uh, there wasn't a quorum, so Jeremy just gave us a great update about some of the work he's been doing, especially on Sagamore Farm. Uh, there was a traffic study done that shows that if we were to do a development there, housing, uh, perhaps housing and uh, some sort of uh, business opportunity, we would not have to change any of the, or developer would not have to change any of the the, the Route 1 uh, road situation, which makes it a lot easier to do it. Also, it, it appears to make uh, any sort of access would most likely be through uh, Chip Lates property, and the Sagamore Farm Road really doesn't uh, work out. So some, a great update there, and there's a lot of progress being made there about looking forward. And I know that he's got some uh, interesting ideas and maybe some good contacts about uh, a way to move forward there, which is... It's, it's a really good idea, and the people, the CDAC people that were there, were excited about that. Um, the cons, uh, Can I the, ask uh, a question about that? Sure. Is that something that was talked about at the? Because I read that report with interest, and it took me a while to understand it. But I didn't see where it said the part about Chip Lates property. I saw that. That, that was not part of that report. That that's that was um, that, that was asking. Because well, this is an important, thank you for bringing this up, because that's, that is, that was the, we. Yes, so in that report, and I sent it to everyone, um, oh, yeah. the, um, what he looked at was Chip Lates, the access to mm -hmm. Chip Lates, um house and the development out back, his commercial properties out back. So he assessed that location as well as Sagamore Farm mm -hmm. Road right. location. Mm -hmm. Those are the two locations he assessed. Mm -hmm. Both of those would not need any off-site road improvements, no left turn lanes, no anything. No, no. Room. That I understood. What I didn't yeah. understand was the part about definitely using chip plates. Where does it say well, the part about Sagamore Farm Road? That was, that's more. that was more of a um, my opinion and my thought. I, the struggle with the Sagamore Farm Road is we have a very large stream that is adja immediately adjacent to the shoulder on Sagamore Farm Road that is eroding. Um, significantly and in the springtime gets sig significant right. volume of water and force and the type of improvements that we would need to do I mean you'd be spending a we would be spending a lot yes, of money to to make that road work um, okay. easier and that's, 
<laughs> Let's let Mark finish with yeah. his comments so we yeah. can go on. So, anyway, it, yeah, that wasn't part of the report. That was uh, Jeremy's assessment. That was the whole point of the report. So I do think we need to circle back to sometimes I feel like we just listen to everybody, give their little select board report, okay. and then we don't okay. actually follow up. Because that, that's like the crux of why we wanted it to. Well, is there something you want to, let's finish this part. So we could need part. something I definitive. I think that's. It, I don't think it is So that we can move part. on. The whole point was to be able to move on from this 30-year discussion of whether that road can work. And so I think if, if there was a conclusion reached that, that we need to just focus on the other road, that we sh it would be good for everybody to move on. Or we should, I mean, how are well, if you look at the if you look at the comp plan, it talks about doing oh. a feasibility study and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, my recommendation just now would be um, really to focus on the chip late access um, because the the needed improvements that would need to be done yeah. to Sagamore Farm Road. It wasn't the purpose of the MDT well, study to solid. make sure. The question was, as I recall, whether or not that site could be made accessible from Route One or not. Mm -hmm. Correct. Period. We did not look. We know there were two options. We weren't sure if they're going to work the report confirmed that either of those could work. Yep. The decision on which one, I don't think it's finalized. And it was point. not in that report. It was not part of that report. True. That's what, that's what the report yep. said. And yeah. that's where we're at the moment. Yes. And so. we have, we have um, in our zoning ordinance, we have um, grade requirements yep. Um, yep. on maximum slopes. Yep. And likely Sagamore Farm Road is probably there. Um, it's close. We can change that. But we can change that. But yep. we also run into a lot of wetland issues up top. There's vernal pools and wetlands at the top of that. Um, I mean, they're always... You can always, um, you know, not get around them, but permit those things and get yeah, through that process. Can. But since we do have recreational access up there, um, we have yep. trails and yep. people using yes, it. Yes, exactly. I, I, from my perspective, I think you try to keep that that area focused on the recreational piece and then do a development up on the other side, but um, so the accessing through Chip's property. But there's a lot, I think, that we will talk about in months to come on this one. Absolutely. I know, but we've been talking about it, and this report was supposed to be... So what, also it was about the, the solar and whether, whether we would be giving up anything by like any options for access to the road by having a solar farm there. And I think it, it was kind of part of the deal that we were gonna settle rather than just continuing mm -hmm. to say, oh, well, we can't do anything there because we don't know that we were gonna be able to settle that question of like would having solar in the rest of that field close options for us, right? Um, that was not part of that was and, looked at, but yeah, I mean, I, I could yeah, give you my opinion on it if no, you'd like. I remember, I, remember the, other day. I remember that the objective of this report, and you're right, I agree that has to go further and fast, but the objective was, does, Any there, was a, there was a theory needed. that it could be prohibitive to have access off of Route 1 because of MDOT. Correct. We've crossed that hurdle. Now Correct. we have to go to the other hurdles. Yep. And that would be far, partially, in my opinion, a, fun, uh, a function of what's being potentially developed out there and where and what's more developable and not. Mm -hmm. So that kind of plays to that whole thing you're talking about. I agree. Could, uh, you could do anything up there. Um, you could. Uh, in, in my opinion, in your opinion at this point, it is not relevant. No. Oh, and CDAC is um, anxious and eager to um, get moving on trying yep. to do something with yep. Sagamore Farm. Yep. So um, we'll be talking about it in the next, I mean, that was on their work plan. Sagamore Farm is on their work plan. Definitely, I mean, I, I just kind of want to get to the point where we can move forward somewhere without whether it's your recommendation or whose ever recommendation we decide to follow, I guess I'm even okay at this with it at this point. But I feel like we're it's a little bit like a not a stalling thing on purpose, but uh, I I disagree. I think oh, really? I okay, think okay. getting this getting this study done was important because we had to find out if we could use Route 1 as X without having to do major work there with DOT, and we can, which is the study. My the second part where I said that. It was was Jeremy's impression because I asked him specifically about Sagamore Farm. So that was that's his impression of from his planning expertise about what wait what makes the most sense how to how to access the property now. But I think now that we have Route One ready, and Jeremy has some good ideas. I think that he's developing about the kind of de developments to put there. Uh, we can start to talk about those. I think this will start to go faster now. But what are what are what's your position now? Because you've been really advocating for s solar. solar expansion there. I'm, so is, is your position still that we should? I'm. I'm. Are you satisfied with the progress we're making in other areas? As long as we're making progress in other areas, my okay. uh, like like uh, some of the other energy members is my concern is 
sooner than later getting some solar done because the, the energy consumption is a, a real important part. I spent a lot of time looking at the um, situation for energy and what's going on with the, the, the kids in, in Europe, especially with the Fridays for Future. And, uh, you know, so the need for, for solar development is, is really important, but I think we've moved ahead and identified some other areas. And we're, as long as we're moving forward there, then I'm fine with um, some other development at Sagamore, as long as okay, we're well, doing good. simultaneously. So yeah, and I, I met with AAA and talked about um, thoughts on road, on how to um, locate a road on the property. So I will share that with you in Perfect. the future. Thanks, Jeremy. Well, no, that makes me feel better that Mark is, because I, I knew you wanted. Yeah, as long know, as, as we're making progress, then it doesn't matter where the solar is, as long as we're making progress. And in that light, I am meeting with Rich Ruff Garden um, in the next couple of days to talk about cool. sites. Right. So, and, and I think that's what situation we have, you know, the consultant for solar who's an expert at what's going on. It's not, and this is where my personal opinion, I sort of push to the side right. and, and listen to the experts. And I'm excited that we have experts now we're moving forward. As long as we're moving forward, I'm, I'm fine. And, and, and all of those situations, no, I have more. Um, the Energy Committee has put together a flyer uh, about, um, you know, the energy changes that Camden has been making, uh, the solar farm, the street lights, um, some other things, and they're putting together a flyer that they would like to see included in the next tax bill. So it has links about how people can, can do some things for uh, the future. And it's a really good flyer. They put a lot of work into it, and that'll be coming to the select board to consider um, maybe the next meeting. So we'll see, you know, how everybody feels about that. But they've done some really good work on it. And I looked at a, what may be the final presentation this afternoon. It looks really great. Um, lastly, the um, I think I, I was at the um, Conservation Commission, and Abby, the intern, has been working on the uh, the boat waste situation. Made a presentation there as she had previously to the uh, Harbor Committee, and she's done a lot of tremendous work. And I think there's some good things going on there. So I like to look at we're making progress in so many different areas. And the last thing I'll mention is uh, I go back to the Opera House and, and some of the great things are happening there. Uh, we've started to institute some free movies. Uh, there'll be three of them, uh, two this summer, one this fall right now set up. The first one was a, a movie about uh, breaking down a, a Beatles album, Rubber Soul. Uh, it was last Wednesday, I believe, and it had really good attendance. It was a free film. Um, Dave asked from the, the, the stage how many people were uh, citizens, how many people were visitors, and it was about a third new people and, and two-thirds of the people were from the town. It was, a, it was a great film. It was really enjoyable. The next one, of course, is the annual presentation of Andre the Seal, which will come in August. And then he, he, is, it an, he hasn't put it on any schedules yet, but I'm really excited that um, there was a film that um, Peter Jackson worked on who is the director of um, Lord of the Rings among other films and it's it's a documentary about World War One called they will not grow old mm -hmm. and that will be our free film on Veterans Day and it's incredibly I've seen it it's an amazing film it's a great thing to do for the town and for people you said they're presenting Andre the seal I presume as a movie yes okay. yes um, <laughs> Yeah, no, just we're getting a new some, of the, yeah. Yeah. some of the other uh, one of the other things an energy thing that the opera has been working on with some some of the the monies that are okay in the budget this year uh, Juniper has put in new LED lights for mm. the staging which are incredibly more uh, useful multicolored and tremendously more energy efficient mm. so we've lost we've taken out all the old heat the heat sink lamps that were huge and we had a couple LEDs in the staging there and those have been moved up to the blue cafe so we're working on more energy efficiency and and better electronics all through the opera house and that's exciting and some of the upcoming shows this Saturday is a move is a circus called preposterous pocket circus at 6 p.m. which is a great kids presentation great circus for kids people are in town and then there's there's a lot of great stuff coming so a lot of progress being made on the opera house thank you mark that's it for me awesome your turn i love mark's stuff I, I eventually i'll spend more time going to shows at the opera house but i do oh. I, it's like the only thing i learn most about the opera house from your i know little, yeah. um it's, clips, it's so there's so much it's cool stuff there. it's great um <clears throat> okay um more about fish um just really quick though um, EV, 
Are you talking the, the, the animal or the band? I was, oh, yeah. <laughs> what if I just like pulled up this like fast? I, like, I was at a fish so concert. <laughs> Show and tell. Um, so there. Um, Oh yeah, the free press. So this was really exciting after spending all these like many hours sitting in the river trying to get the just the perfect moment and all the hours of thinking that like, wow, I'm getting this really amazing footage probably right now and then coming home and being like just nothing but black and um, it's really hard to take pictures of fish. But uh, they did a really nice um, sort of introductory article um, in the free press and I was thrilled to see like our friends from Camden right on the front cover of the of the free press. That was a nice article. Um, then um, there are lots of other, it's been interesting during the different seasons, the fish change. Um, and so right now what we have making a massive comeback, um, and at first they were just in Rockport Harbor, but there are just as many in Camden, um, you can see that's the front of a paddleboard there that gives you a sense of the size of those fish. But there are like thousands and thousands of pogies. Um, and for years, they really got, they're, they're also called Atlantic Manhattan. Um, oh shoot, it's kind of stalling here. Mm -hmm. But um, they were really like fished out. The Russian, those big boats um, did a lot of fishing of pogies and um, they will, they're filter feeders. And so they come, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're about, um, let's see if I can find, those are actually not the pogies. Those are small blueback herring, but let's see. Um, they're everywhere in the harbor. You see them jump out. They have, they, they go around and just like eat up all the phytoplankton. Um, and algae, and so they're actually good for water quality as long as they don't all die in the harbor. Um, sometimes they deplete so much oxygen that they, you start to see them going like this. Um, but it's really cool just to spend some time down there and see all of the, all of the activity. You can, I've never seen so many fish in my life and people like and you can see them from, you don't have to go underwater for the most part, you can see them from the top and they move really slowly and, um, you know, it's even people that are seasoned harbor people that have been watching for years, they say they haven't seen this in 20 years. So it's really, it's really cool and exciting. Um, I don't know if that's gonna, but uh, it's amazing just to like so much, these are the, a different kind of fish now too, but you just put like a camera underneath the water and you just see this like whole world down there um, that's different. But it's not playing very well for my phone right now. But that's pretty much all I've been focused on is just um, writing about fish and taking pictures of I fish. And um, Nate Gray is coming next week for our uh, select word workshop. So I hope everybody 30th. is. 30th. Yes, the 30th, four Tuesday, 4 o'clock. Um, and uh, it spread the word. Um, and I've been kind of, I know it's a select word workshop technically, but um, I've been not when I've been telling people about it, I've been saying more like presentation and so maybe we'll sit there and just kind of listen. Public can attend. Oh yeah, no, definitely. But it's, um, I think it, hopefully we'll let, we won't take up too much of it like ourselves. Because I, I think there's I, a lot to. I um, trust the bridge really get to it, but we won't. But yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of interest. Hopefully a lot of people will show up and I have a question yeah. about fish in the harbor. Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, wastewater department has been doing, public works has been doing in for the last couple of years is, is working on connections to make sure that um, the storm water is, is cleaner. It's not, you know, we're not mixing up the stuff that hopefully keep. So hopefully we have a cleaner harbor. Mm. Is that making a difference in bringing fish back? Have we, does anybody know if that's made any progress yet? And that might be responsible we're, for We're in the fish process back? of doing harbor testing as we speak. We'll know the answer to that question a little better in the next few weeks. Okay. Well, it'll, it'll be a sample. You know, honestly, the fish kind of like it dirty some too. Like, they do. They um, do. The, it depends on, it depends on the fish. It depends on what's but, in it too. You know, for, right, it definitely depends on what's in it. But you can see where the wastewater treatment outlet is um, in the harbor. It's 
it's hard to see now because there's so many pogies swirling around it. But normally when it's calm, you can kind of see it. And once in a while, Thanks. Steve Pixley, yeah. Um, and they go crazy for it. And sometimes, you know, the different fish do actually like to, to mm -hmm. eat that stuff. It's mm -hmm. technically okay because it's, there's, you know, there's good bacteria. But um, people talk about how there used to be sharks in the harbor and all kinds of, because of all the gross stuff that we were sending down there. Right. So. Um, One person's junk is another person's treasure. I think, right. I think with the harbor water quality, it doesn't make such like, quite as much of a difference. It's more the total health of Penobscot Bay. Yep. But then with rivers, it really makes a difference because there's nowhere for them to escape. When you, right. when you really pollute a river and you make it too warm and too much bacteria, they, there's, they can't go anywhere. So yeah. they're, um, right. and that's the problem with, with our river right nice, now. Nice, but, shot. nice shots. Nice shots. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Taylor, how about you, bud? Nothing to add tonight. Ditto. With that said, we'll go on to the approval of the Windjammer Festival schedule. Mm. Do we want to discuss it, Holly? We have a schedule. Yeah, well, no, we actually have in that packet. Yeah. Give it to Bill. That's fine. And we have in the packet. <laughs> it yes. looks great. It looks legal. Yeah, it looks very. You guys are getting a sneak preview at the bottom. No, really. Of what our Something. We have on our t shirt. Cool. See if you can see anything special in that photo, in that image. Sam Manning. Oh, it's the rowing guy. Thank you. Oh. Did you guys? Oh, that is that's that's, that's really very, special. That's a really that's nice touch. Wow. His image. Oh, it is. Oh, oh really? Wow. Oh, that's great. And Susan gave it to us. Wow. Uh, Gives me goosebumps. To use. And so we we Joe at Adventure was able to incorporate it into the another graphic that he was putting together so it's a teeny oh, tiny little really but it'll, we'll amazing. put it nice and big on the t-shirts and great holly yeah um so sam was a special guy mm -hmm. um so windjammer uh now that lobster ride is behind us and that inferno of a weekend um i can focus a little bit more on windjammer festival we do there are quite a number of Vendors already signed up. I've already talked with Central Pyro about the fireworks. Um, there's a lot of stuff already well in the works. Um, we've already got sponsors on board. Um, as you can see, the schedule is going to be the same as last year, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, no events on Sunday, but the, um, the I believe that the foreign car show will be happening on Chestnut Street on Sunday, mm -hmm. a separate event. Um, so. Uh, I am um, asking my vendors and others to set up on Thursday afternoon. So I would like to have the public landing uh, closed um, in the afternoon, I don't know, five o'clock or so, so we can start four o'clock so I can start getting people in there. Um, it's gonna take us a while to kind of get some of those cars out. Um, sure. Anyways, it's always a struggle. Um, and then have the public landing closed through um, just Saturday night. Um, there's Sunday a dance morning. party Saturday night, um, and so all of the vendors will be gone. The only thing that will be there is the rotary tent, and they'll come on Sunday morning, but that doesn't require a closure of the public landing to remove that tent. So it could be opened back up. Okay. Um, just whenever. that one, thing, one item has to be removed, is the, just the tent? Yeah, just the rotary's big tent. Okay. Um, but all the other vendors will, um, for the most part, be um, out of there mm -hmm. um, on Saturday night. Um, so that is really the only closure that we need. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need anything on Atlantic Avenue. There will be pirates over on Harbor Park, but everyone just walks over there and we don't need to close that off. So um, just the public landing. It's a nautical dog show. <laughs> um, dogs dressed with little anchors on them. And, oh, you know, okay, that the... kind of dog fat, nautical fashion show. Nautical fashion show. Oh, okay. Take that this year. That's not the good, agility good. thing. It is. There is some agility stuff yeah, in there. Right, there's some there's... just sort of. There's a kind of a talent aspect to it. It's, there is definitely skill. I'd say it's. Mm -hmm. it's if you it's have pretty... a dog, then you should. It's fun you, to you've watch. You've got a month to Timber get it and trained. Let's get them trained. Get them up to speed on how to be a nautical dog. <laughs> they don't jump in the harbor, but oh. you know, like they do in Rockland. We we don't have a. Uh, Boat yard no, dog race. No Fenway, but we don't have any of those. Okay. We will have music. Um, we are bringing back some music this year on the landing on Saturday. Okay. So we have a couple of um, kind of bluegrass folksy 
um, uh, groups that will mm -hmm. um, be playing uh, a couple hours here and a couple hours there um, around the lobster crate race, basically. The lobster crate race last year was um, in the afternoon because of the tide. This year it's going to be at 11 a.m. Oh. because of the tide, so it will be a little bit earlier. Um, Good idea. And um, pretty much everything's the same with, you know, pancakes and chatter challenge and um, fish ray relay. Mm -hmm. um, we will, we, I do have to try to, f I've got a meeting with um, Alec Brainerd from um, Apprentice Shop. Artisan. Mm -hmm. Artisan, Boat Artisan Boat Works. Works thank yeah. you. And he's um, going, he's got a plan to bring the build a boat back cool. where he's creating kits. For the for the kids to put together, small ones, small ones, and um, for then, so we've got to figure out where we're going to be able to fit a little, you know, either it's going to be a race or at least an opportunity to try your boat okay. in the harbor, you know. But um, so I've got to fit that one in here okay. at some point. But very aggressive schedule, a good one again. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of work. Yes. Any comments? Motion to ex what? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Allison. Um, can. Just you just clarify, and I'm not asking this because I have any problem, right? but just for the public when we get questions, who, who funds this? How does it all work? Is it town? Good question. So, like um, the, you know, the fireworks, mm -hmm, the... Mm -hmm. I have, we have, um, we were able to put on a, a really, um, we were able to be really aggressive with our budget last year, so we have money left over. Um, we do have sponsors this year. Uh, the town doesn't pay for anything. Um, we're able to do everything by sponsors, and there's not a lot of expense to this event. Um, our musicians are $300 and $500, and, you know, I mean, the only reason why I'm bringing them back is because we have a little bit of money this year, and we're not going to yeah. do $1,000 um, groups. Um, but the fireworks is the biggest one. It's a $5,000 show that we, we put on. Um, and um, but we've got good sponsors that are are um, the kick in the money to cover all that the, that. And the fireworks, um, what kind of plan is in place to? I assume we'll not let Jeremy, so Jeremy might we'll let Jeremy speak to the NFPA regulations we're going to apply to here too. Yeah, yeah there's a but fire marshal's permit that we. Well, that, I can understand, but we did a, a special arrangements with the fireworks person mm -hmm. for this Saturday night. Fireworks with the yeah. and but also, this who is the contact person for the? Are you the you choose the fireworks provider? Is there only one? Uh, I booked in last year. Yes. It's the same one. That it's the same. Did it's the same. Fourth of July. So like, Fourth of July. Are there the same options trip. in terms of? There's all the stuff that rains down. There, there are questions about stuff that goes in the water and it, you see Adults. plastic in some places and other places it's different. You, could you maybe ask them what the Constituencies there. What it? Yeah. What it is? Are there options? How do they, you know, make sure that it's environmentally sound? Does anything get discharged into the water? What As kind of fireworks? What chemicals are used, if any? What? Who? I know so little about they, they, this. They have MDAs for fireworks. They should be able to give that to us. If they can't give it to us, that would be a problem. I'm, they just, I'm they assuming it. Say, um, we met with, because there's fireworks this weekend. Sorry, um, Lyman and Morse is putting on, and they had an issue last year. Yep. And then we had a fire on the island um, July 4th. July 4th. So Chris and I um, and Randy met with Lyman and Morse. We're going to do the same thing with Holly. And um, she's going to let her. So state fire marshal issues a permit. There are NFPA standards for those. Um, the state fire marshal does not enforce those. Mm -hmm. So we are taking it upon sure. ourselves as the authority having jurisdiction and making them, we're making Lyman and Morse, and they in turn got Central Maine Pyrotechnics to, they have to, the night of, they gotta have, they're gonna have someone on the island, um, and then they're gonna have someone on the island at daybreak, first light in the morning, checking for more um, possible, you know, um, issues out there. Lyman and Morse is, yes. yes. They're going to have someone on the island during the event the and tank. then in the morning with, with a tank. tank. And it's part of the requirement under... Firefighter, though, it's made from the fireworks yeah, company? Yeah, that was my question, too. It is not a firefighter. They have, they're going to have backpacks on the, on the island. Um, and, I mean, Chris can speak to the reason why. I think it's really a coverage issue. 
Um, and then Lyman and Morse this weekend is on Sunday. They're going to have a crew of 10 people, 10 volunteers or 10 employees likely will be on the island um, looking for any debris and they will be collecting any debris that's on the island um, and removing that. So that's part of what we told them they need to do and we're going to expect mm -hmm. Windjammer weekend to do the same thing. And then what about the stuff that goes just in the That's water? a good question. That's a question I have too and I don't know the answer to it. Um, I wonder the same thing about when Belfast fired theirs off this weekend, this past weekend, right over the footbridge. Yep. I have the same question and, and maybe Holly and I can kind of joint look for those. Why don't we get the MDAs if they can from them? Mm -hmm. If they have it, they should have that. I will say Lyman and Morse is actually looking at into the future. I don't know if I can go down this road, but they're looking in the future about a light show as opposed to a firework yeah. show. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's quite expensive yeah. to do that. Um, a light show with drones, about 300 drones, I think they talked about. Yeah. It's about like $20,000. It's cr things. It's quite yeah, something. Um, but, but the light show is phenomenal, and there's no pollution from that. Um, and no fire hazards Carbon either. Right. So, yeah, right. Yes. That. Those things up. So. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Concern, oh, concerns great. about the fireworks, you know, aftermath. Um, and just during it. Besides it's fire, um, is something new. So we're going to have to be addressing it as we go forward now. What's the mantra? Right. I'm not saying you're doing anything. It's just more like, oh, we have an opportunity to try to. No, I, you know, I, I, I think, think it's great, and we and we've we talked to, at committee. Um, following hearing your conversation or Suckwood's conversation about or discussion about um, the debris that, you know, it would be, we could probably get, um, we always, there's always people that want to go to the island. So it would be very, very easy to get a group of people to go to the island on Saturday and uh, after the fireworks and pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't, I don't think yeah. we would have a problem yeah. um, finding people to do that because not very often can they get over there. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they, I mean, you can get over there any time you want. Well, kind but, of, but people that are just in, I mean, regular, not everyone has a boat people. to get over there, uh, right. a skiff right. or a, right. a kayak. Did all that come from the water or is it on the island? So yeah. this was the stuff that just falls you know, directly on the island. Um, and it's interesting. It's like, you know, it's all in, like, I'm guessing that's Chinese writing, but I actually don't know how to tell the difference between different. All of the yeah. fireworks available are only, they only come from all China. Made in China. Right. So it's, and then it's got, like, so this is, yeah, this is all the stuff that just falls directly on the island. Mm -hmm. But then other people have said that there's stuff that just, when they're firing it off, stuff that maybe just comes directly off the barge mm -hmm. or falls into the water and sinks, that there's stuff that sinks, there's stuff that floats, that there's a whole. So it would just be nice to know what the full range of debris Sorry. we can mm -hmm. expect yeah, it'd is. Be nice. If, I mean, if that's just brown paper that is biodegradable, then that would be nice to know. Or is it? I've actually, I mean, I've actually read that it has a lot of heavy metal residue be, in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't know what, the, like, what chemicals that's is that? Kind of yeah, you need to take a look at it before yeah. we try to guess at what the materials are. Oh, that would be a smart way to approach it, and then we can, then, then we'll know. I mean, that's what <laughs> people saying and blah blah blah. It's nice, but yeah, yeah. let's and do it's hard let's to deal do the homework. With this, you know, mid season. I mean, I yeah, well, we can, but we can, we can still get the material. Oh, I mean, in, in terms of the oh the stuff oh. that's in there. I mean, yeah, I mean, we we can get that. That should be yeah. readily available. Oh. Yes, we'll get that. I think it's a good idea. Can I ask one question? I do too. Yeah. How expensive is the uh, Light show that you're talking about that Wayfair is looking into. Twenty thousand. It sends, and if they do spectacle of sound and light, it's fifty thousand. But we don't have to. It doesn't have to be the Super Bowl level of. No, that's just the comparison level. The type of light show that was. That's correct. So, so, so when we're thinking about that, right? Okay. That's correct. So not all light shows are twenty well, or fifty thousand. It's oftentimes done with drones too. Yep. A minimum show. Yep. A minimum show. Yep. And there's usually a lot of drones in it too. Yeah, hundreds of drones. Three hundred. I thought I heard. Uh huh. Then the but then the birds will be complaining. <laughs> I think we should illuminate the harbor one night. There you go. It's. I mean, it, there's there's nothing there more no, spectacular right. than that. Right. Oh. Anyway, to back to the schedule for yes. the uh, the only thing we have to approve really is the closure of the landing. And that's the only thing we need an approval of, but we can approve the schedule as written now with the understanding that there was a closure for Saturday and Sunday of the landing only. Friday and Saturday. 
Friday, I'm sorry. That's You're going to get 5 p.m. Thursday? Was it's that your Friday request? and Saturday only. So I'll make a motion. Because you're starting at, uh, in, the, in the afternoon on Thursday. Perfect. Yeah, you said 5 p.m. Because I've got to so. get people Perfect. set up. I'll make a motion that uh, to close the uh, harbor area from 5 p.m. Thursday. That would be August 8th. <laughs> August 8th, uh, reopening after midnight on Saturday, August, August 29th. I'm looking at the wrong yeah, wrong dates. yeah. We Sorry. have a few extra trash cans there too, maybe. August 29th. We want. Yeah, September. Okay. August 29th, yeah. 30 and 31. Yeah. Uh, and closing midnight on Saturday, August 31st? Yes. Or reopening midnight? Reopening. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If not earlier, but. Yeah. And that'd be Thursday, 5 p.m. on August, 3rd, or August 29th. Yeah. Second. I'll, I'll, I'm afraid to say, we're asking your questions. All those in favor? <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Great. Good luck. And with I, it. I should have, I should have stood up during the non-agenda items, but um, the lobster ride last weekend, which was our first um, attempt at putting that on, uh, the main lobster ride that with yeah. the Bicycle Coalition of Bain, yeah. that they've yeah. turned it over to uh, the Cannon Snowball and the YMCA, and then Side Country Sports was our um, kind of our lead sponsor, um, and it was a really great event despite the heat. Uh, we had 308 uh, pre-registered riders that did everything from a fi did 15 mile to 100 mile rides all the way down to Port Clyde and back. Wow. A, six, a 38 mile ride that took them up to Threshers in Searsmont and back down. Um, and those and the 100 mile ride is to do both of those loops because mm -hmm. um, it's only 68 miles to go down to. That, that's um, huge. Uh, did they start here? They started at the Snow Bowl. Yep, and ended at the Snow Bowl. Wow. Wow. 40 people um, sign up to do it the same day. Um, additional. Um, Indeed, I'd be dead. So 348 people. Wow, that's um, great. That's huge. Did that ride. And, uh, and it was a great weekend. Um, it was, it, we didn't have as big of a turnout. Um, people didn't stay afterwards because they wanted to go and get, um, uh, you know, into the, oh. into the water and into cool air as quick as they could. But um, it was a really great event. We learned a lot. We've got a, a debrief meeting um, next week to talk about, you know, what to do um, and how to plan better for next year. And we're looking forward to doing it again next year um, and going forward. Mm -hmm. And the proceeds are split between the um, Snowball and the YMCA. Okay. Um, to benefit uh, okay. youth youth programs. If you did 348 this year, you can do double that next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a, we were going to cap it at 500. Oh, they've done 900 of people before, so um, yeah. But wow. fundraiser. Yeah. Sorry, I missed did, did, this. Was Main it lobster ride. It's was been it? happening for many years. Um, they would the Bicycle mm. Coalition of Maine um, has been doing the uh, the Main Lobster Ride. They rented the Snowball as their venue for years. That's how we okay how they became familiar with us. And then last year, it was they called it because of rain. And they also, at that point, decided that they, they were already talking about the yeah. fact that it took a lot of people to put it on, mm -hmm. and they just didn't have the manpower, um, the people power, to, to really uh, put the event on. And so they wanted to pass it off. And so we, we stepped forward. Um, no, I mean, not to the town, but to, to some groups. And we, um, there were people that were already involved uh, as riders and volunteers from yeah. the local community, Jane Self being one of them. Yep. Uh, from the high school, and um, and so we we agreed to um, to try it, and it was a, it was great. a lot of fun. Good job. Is it a revenue generator at all, or just? A, oh yeah. Oh, it is. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We cut up on all all of our non agenda items now. Um, the fifth item is the approval of the Morris dancing on Sunday, August 11th at three o'clock at the library in the Episcopal Church, and Saturday, August 17th at 9 a.m. at the Farmer's Market. Another place to dance in the afternoon that's no, the, no the, greater the, than three parking spaces that are paved. When I read no one, <laughs> It what, says it right. What, and it does it really? <laughs> yeah. What I read was only... Uh, free. Context read, is confusing. More than three side Context by side. Text is very confusing. I, I read... It's on the We Dance Free bullet points email. Well, I, the, all, all I saw requested was Sunday, August 11, 3 o'clock, Library Episcopal Church. August 17th, Farmer's Market, 9 a.m. That's all I read. Sold. Do we have to give permission for people to That's dance on town what are we property? Permission for? I, it depends on the property. Yeah, I, I think, think it depends. That they... and, and, and can we approve something on the library? 
You wouldn't be approving the library. It would just be the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> They also would like to be near the ferry location. Janice, Janice has told them who they need to get in touch with for the other location. So we're doing the Episcopal Church. Ferry on, yeah, the ferry, yeah. She's so we're approving the Episcopal approved. Church at 3 o'clock on the 11th and the Farmer's Market at 9 o'clock on Why the 17th. Why are we approving exactly, like Taylor That's said? Yeah. Don't Why don't we approve the people who play instruments on Main Street? I don't get that either. We're not closing but, anything, right? The Farmer's Market always has music and activity like that. I, I, I don't know if we've ever done this before with this. I don't know. I would make don't. a motion that... We approve it if this I, is within our purview. I, I, I don't see why not. Well, I. It's free. Well, we do not need to pass the hat. We have danced in Camden in the past. Understand the rules have changed. What oh, rules? and also the cr appreciate the crowd issues. We would like to dance somewhere where there I are people. That's a good idea. Um, I, I, think we sh I think we should be sending the message that you can dance without asking permission first. I don't. Is there any more to this? That you can add. Who told them that the rules <laughs> have changed in Camden? To make sure that we well, know they about kind it. of wanted to draw attention to the event yeah, and get I, it out I, there that I, they I were going to be there, and um, just make sure that um, the people for who are responsible for the property are okay with them being there. Well, the farmers' market is our property. The Episcopal Church is not. They're, they're right. this, is only going, this is only for the farmer's market. Okay. Okay. And Janice is, okay. See, I, I think it's important. There's been a back and forth between them and Janice, it is, and so she's spoken to them about the Episcopal Church and the library and okay, who's good. to contact. I think it is important the farmer's market because we don't want things going on and just going. That is our town property. So notification minimum should be done for that. So we, we should just, just approve that. We have a motion to approve Farmer's Market at 9 a.m. on the 17th. So moved. For Morris Dancing, thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye, sir. Great. On to the consent agenda. Um, I'm going to remove uh, the third item, approval of Knox County has a mitigation plan to the next agenda item and ask that we only consider two items for the consent agenda, one being the consideration of renewal literal license for High Mountain Hall and Uncle Willie's Candy Shop, one. Two, vote on the already designated person for MMA vice president and executive committee. And on that one, um, we would be approving to authorize Audra to sign for the town rather than the entire select board signing. Do I hear any object objection to those two items? No. Not hearing any, then they are hereby approved. We will go on to the new item, next item, which is the approval of discussion on the Knox County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Who wants to lead that one? I'm not going to do it. Uh, what? I, I'd be happy to leave it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge document. Can you give us some background on it? Yes. Yeah, so Chris is our EMA director for the town, has been involved in um, the background work that's gone on in the development of the plan. Okay. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about the process over the past? Three, three years. years. Three years, four it's years. Three years since 2016, right? <clears throat> 2016 is when... Um, 2015, 2016, 2016, we submitted information to Knox County oh. for the development of the plan. Oh, okay. So it's over three years. Yes, it is. I was young then. Y'all were younger then. Was there any kind of plan like this in place beforehand, <laughs> or is it totally? This is, uh, uh, no, if you, I, I don't remember the dates, but if you read through the plan, um, mm. this is like the fourth time that oh. all the towns in Knox County are being asked to adopt the county mitigation plan. And I believe it's, it's a seven-year cycle. Seven-year cycle. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Updated every seven years. Right. Is there anything notable in this that... Well, that's is there anything notable or changing that we should know or be aware of? So that's unusual. So this is a so this is a regional plan. Um, we could develop our own plan if we wanted to, but it's much uh, wiser to go in on the regional plan for a number of different reasons. Um, so is there anything different? Primarily, the focus in the past has been on infrastructure issues and addressing. Um, things like that that we work with Rick Seibel about. Um, items like where the uh, Barnstown Road regularly floods mm -hmm. with rainfall that comes down off uh, Bald Mountain. Uh, so it's to address items like that. Uh, uh, Washington Street where runoff will erode the shoulders. Those are typically the things that have gone in, into the plan in the past. As was said earlier, 
this plant hardly ever gets anybody's attention. And <laughs> in 2015, 2016, except for Bill and myself, there was nobody, uh, nobody here had any input into the plan. Hmm. Um, yeah. and, and certainly, as Allison and I talked on Friday, there are, um, there are a number of issues that have come up more recently that, that mm -hmm. should be developed into the plan that Jeremy has worked on um, in the last couple of days. And, and I talked with Ray Sisk last week about making an addendum to some issues yep. that, that we'd like to address. And yep. we've had some commu communication from Ray today that we can just, that, that, that list that was developed, we can just add to the plan and have it adopted. So we could, and, so if we were to know, procedurally, if we were to approve this plan, doesn't prohibit this plan as written at the moment doesn't preclude us from next week, whenever coming up an addendum to the plan. I think they can actually. No, it doesn't. And what I would what I would suggest it would be to um, approve this plan with um, proviso, providing with us providing an addendum of additional information that we'll provide to the county. No, and does, can you give us a short sense? idea of what you've added in? Well, when you, but just procedure, <laughs> Jeremy, stop, stay with the procedure for a second. Yes. If we make some addenda changes and we give it to the county to incorporate in the entire county plan? Um, so how this works, and if you can follow. So every, count, every town in the county actually has a member of their, you know, their community is involved in, right. in developing their plan. What part do you want me to go to? Um, the section that has all of our, um, each town's um, items that they're addressing. But, yeah. Not, not the comments from individual towns, but in the chart, there's the little tables. chart, the table. Tables that have yes. the list of the project list yep. where it's Bree Street and it says yep. completed. And yeah, oh, I see. So each town is involved in this. Each town looks at the hazards. And when we're talking hazards, these are natural hazards. So this would be uh, like in Bangor, when I did one in Bangor for, oh. for Penobscot County, the ice storm was not, um, you know, in the too distant right. past. Right. So we included ice storms, we included um, and so in here, you look at um, forest fire, you could look at um, rock slides um, off of the mountain, you look at... Um, can you, um... While she's straightening it out, Jeremy, so if you make some... You flooding, some, you can look at storm so events. So we can, we can add elements, we, but it'll be applicable to Camden only? For Camden only. So how this works is... Each um, each town has it has it in the table. I saw that. has an item or has a list of things that right. they have concerns with, right. and then they put a give a cost estimate to fix them. A schedule, priority a schedule, schedule and, and when it's going to get not. done. Yeah, okay. And we have a handful of things that were completed. Right. Um, and there were some that weren't completed yet. So you're, you're talking so about we're adding to that add list. So we're going to add some things to that plan, um, and those things would be thank you things like. Um, Determine flood risk impact of Knox Mills Dam, Knowlton Dam, and a, an additional abandoned barrier. Evaluate dams for removal. Um, assess options for reduce flood, reducing flood hazards associated with privately owned dams on the McGunsuk River. Evaluate discrepancy and publish reports on the downstream damage likely to occur in the event of breach of Knox Mills Dam. Implement recommendations of a Montgomery Dam feasibility study. Redesign of seawall at Harbor Park to be more resilient and less susceptible to frequent overtopping during high tide events. Mm -hmm. Public landing and infrastructure redesign in preparation for sea level rise and increased flooding. Evaluate options for making east and west dams more resilient. Those are the kind of things we can put in there. Um, what is but us? even some of that stuff from the watershed school reports. Yeah. Not, I mean, that's a lot of the stuff that's coming out in these climate reports um, is really relevant. So what what I would do is what what I the plan is is just to do an addendum, and we'd send it to Ray Sisk, and he would send it. So how this. FEMA looks at this, the state emergency sure. management people look at sure. this, and you've got to follow their sure. standard and their requirements to do this plan. So we're just going to add and have an addendum that's going to have some additional town of Camden um, projects, cost estimates, timeline, responsible parties, and, and status right. so, of it. So, there's, so I see two actions, and I'm hearing uh -huh. two actions. One is approval of this document as it is, and then there'll be a second action at some point soon to approve a amendment or to the table that has this list in that correct yes what i would recommend is just that um i mean if you want to i mean they've got a time frame on this a little bit right oh, because oh. fema's already reviewed right. this 15 of the 18 towns have already approved this document so we don't want this to go on what i would would recommend that you allow 
Chris, myself, and maybe Audra to um, develop an addendum to this plan that we'll submit to the county, and you yep. guys hopefully are okay with that. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. One, one, thing, one thing I noticed, I think there's only three towns that has local staff working on updating. The other towns are just going with whatever's done. Kind of so, common. It's kind of common. According to the chart here. So We're one of the lucky three. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you're working on it and thinking about things that, you know, most people are going to miss. Is this, does what we include or not include in this plan come into play after a disaster in terms of getting state and federal fund, fund emergency funding? It helps. That's a great question. That's a really good question. Oh, yeah. 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 That. So if there's a presidentially declared disaster right. or a winter storm, we can't get that federal funds if, we're, if we don't adopt the mitigation plan. Right. Good to know. Right. And the mitigation plan doesn't have to formally identify each specific thing. It's written broad enough okay. right. that it can be all encompassing. Okay. And if you look at the map that's included, we, um, you know, it looks, it shows flooding issues. It talks about summer severe storm events, um, storm surge, um, and those kinds of things. And it's just, it just highlights the whole coast yeah. of Camden. Yeah. It highlights the McGuntucook River, and it highlights the harbor as flooding issues. So right. within that, we can be pretty broad sure. um, in how we, mm. how they interpret it or we apply it. it. And it's written to be flexible and adaptable. Yeah, so sure. Should part be. of it was the problem that I said, some of the language, when I actually looked at what the town of Camden had, what the, our responses had been in the municipal survey, there was a bunch of stuff in there that was written quite well in what Camden sent, but it didn't quite make it into the final plan mm -hmm. that I saw. Um, and there was a lot of focusing, I think we've been really good at recognizing the risk of our town-owned dams and trying to explain that and we're required to with the emergency action plans, but the privately owned dams have been off the radar. And so I think in a, several cases, just updating the language to say not just most of the risk comes from town-owned dams, but there's also a lot of risk from the privately owned dams. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's, it's probably it's, language to include, but uh, they're probably mm -hmm. likely not there because um, neither Maine Emergency Management nor FEMA have any data on it, information or oversight on those privately owned dams. Right, right which is why we would recognize that as especially risky. Mm -hmm. Right. Why don't we? Yeah. 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 Motion. Why don't we look at his motion, simplify it to give, uh, prove this, then give Jeremy the authority to develop this with the cooperation wherever he deems necessary. I'm going to have to list a bunch of names. I'm going to say Chris with with me and okay, Barbara, as that, he's the that EMA should, guy. Your decision. Yeah, um, say but, Matt too. And Matt. So moved. <laughs> yeah. Second. All in favor? <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Thanks, guys. A great yeah, idea. Absolutely. Thank you for doing that. You're yeah. Stay right up there, aren't you? And, and thank you for the extra work for thank you guys for into it. That yeah, they did a bunch of they extra did. work very quickly, they did. and very, very I quickly. appreciate in days. A good result. In thank days. you. Good hot week. Well, well stay there, Chief. I was really quite impressive, actually. <laughs> Chris actually knew before that's, I asked that's, that's that not, I was going not, to ask. That's not so. what I heard. He was anticipating. You yeah. know, I was like, whoa. Uh. <laughs> anticipating. Okay, so next agenda item would be somebody to approve to withdraw. Now, I, I read this as withdrawing from the fire department. I read it too quickly. But it's a, <laughs> approval to withdraw from the fire department reserve fund the repairs for engine number five. You want to tell us what those repairs yeah, are? Yeah, it's just I was stuck on withdrawing from the fire department. Because <laughs> Why did you say that? I, I got I was scared. We had a conversation earlier today about people withdrawing from the fire department because they We did. We did. Um, that's what got me thinking. Losing about. a couple of um, people to the army, and it really, uh, really hurts. You're losing a couple oh. now. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I knew about one. I didn't know there were two. Yeah, he just told me yesterday at noon time. Mm -hmm. Came in on his lunch break to tell me. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, they're going to do good things in the army. So it is, it is. Call, call, call firefighters. Right? Yes. Yep. Yep. But they're not allowed to call people anymore. No. Correct. Uh, which kind of goes back to the why aren't we having a firefighter on Curtis Island? If I could just put engine five on hold for a second. Uh, several years ago, uh, the town purchased four forestry uh, tanks and gave them to the caretakers and said, these are yours to take care of the island. And when there are fireworks, 
we have some expectations that you're going to be monitoring the island. Um, we typically, during a fireworks, put two trucks uh, that have six seats. On 4th of July, I had, excuse me, a total of 10 spaces right. for people. Right. I had six people on the 4th of July. Uh, we have fireworks this Saturday night. I currently have two people signed up for those 10 spaces. So I really can't afford to put people on the island. Understood. Mm -hmm. And still protect the rest of the town. Correct. Mm -hmm. We have some caretakers around the island. I think we have some expectations of those caretakers. Well, uh, I'm all on board with what you're saying. It seems it's like there might be a little bit of a tone to it. They definitely do. But there's only so much when the fire reaches a certain level. Um, there, I, I think there are times where the wind is blowing and we don't always know that the threat. I mean, you know that fighting fires is not just something you can be like, Allison, here's a backpack. We have some expectations. Um, so we have, um, part, and that's part training on how to. That's part of what has not happened in the past is coordination with the fireworks shooter. Yep. It just kind of randomly yeah. happens, and that's the conversation we had with Lyman Morse uh, a week or so ago. Is that they're going to call me at five o'clock and say, "Are we okay to go ahead with doing the show tonight?" And if we don't think, I will probably go and check the island. Um, Mm -hmm. on the day of the shoot and make sure that it's okay. If I think it's too dry out there, I'm going to tell them no, it's not okay. Or Howling Gale. Lyman Morse is allowable under NFPA code. It is. Right. Oh, it is. It's National it is. Fire Protection stuff. It's, it's always been a, my, a, a bit of a concern of mine that there's, it just happens. We don't really yeah. have, we don't have any influence over when fireworks happen. The, 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 the permits issued by the fire marshal's office. State fire marshal, yeah. Right. With the things that happened on the island, uh, we did some more research and we found that within right. the NMPA codes, we have some, as the authority having jurisdiction, we have some authority. authority. Oh, that's good. And we can have some influence over whether the show happens or not. So, uh, you know, in the past, the Connors have called me and said, we think it's a bit dry out here and I've gone out and looked. Right. Um, and so if I think it's too dry, it's too dry. Well, and this old procedure will morph into I'm not, a, I'm not trying a to policy. Put no, and other things too, you know, even just like sometimes this last minute moving the, of the boats where, you know, Vinny will get calls like, you got to move boats. So, and, it, and it's like, just seems a little bit helter skelter. Like, okay, well, what, I can't get out there. What happens if we don't move this customer's boat? Who's responsible for, you know, the town leases the mooring for the summer. And then all of a sudden they get a call from not the town, but somebody else saying, Boat might catch on fire. I mean, how do it just, right. like you said, a little halter skelter. And yes, and, and so hopefully we're, we're bringing a little bit more planning to that. Right. Um, well, maybe you should go we, in the hazard mitigation. Going out there for, we went out there for one year with a, while the fireworks show was going on, with Pixley, and, and that happens again. The fireworks is stopping yeah. until. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's allowed in the NFPA code as well. Right. Having to have the shooter's phone number and. Right. Stop, stop. Yeah. Over what's happening out there. Well, and to that end, we remember we talked about doing a, a modification to the uh, harbor ordinance or whatever about a barge limitation. We could limit that. It morphed into this discussion on NFPA, which is much easier to implement because now we right. can develop a, a, a town policy to cover all of these things. If we have to get the drafted, that's all. Right. And select like board can approve that, including some of these elements we haven't documented yet. Right. You know, like like what Chief talks about uh, coming out there, assessing the day of. We can get that all into the policy. Right. And I think Jeremy and I have had that conversation about develop, developing a policy that. That's much easier. Yes. Much, much more achieved. Right. We can do it quicker. OK. Yeah. So back to your withdrawing money. Engine 5. <laughs> Engine 5. <laughs> Thanks. Engine 5 is a 1997 truck. Uh, we typically purchase trucks with a, a 5 to 30 year plan uh, lifespan. Uh, 22 years old it yep. has some rust on the body and we'd like to get that fixed and the cost is uh, we currently have a price from a vendor we have 25,000 in the reserve fund we have a price from a vendor about 22.5 and we have recently found out that the vendor that we used to fix the ladder truck back in 2012 is is in the business again so we're going to revisit that vendor as well what is your What's the goal lifespan for Engine 5? Well, uh, 30 years would be good. And I think that um, I think it's Maybe all it's... part of the larger question of what we do with EMS. Mm -hmm. uh, because then we would 
revisit our apparatus replacement schedule. Right. And can I ask a question? How long will the truck be out of service? Um, I would say probably four to six weeks. And how, how will that affect your operations? We'll just shift some trucks around for right now. Won't affect it too much. And assuming, oh, I'm go sorry, go ahead, go ahead. that this is, is rust that needs to be fixed, not just like a cosmetic little sum. Correct. Okay. Yep. You know how there's a couple kinds of rust. <laughs> Given that you're possibly bidding out, are you looking for not to exceed approval? We have 25000 in the reserve account. Thanks so for that. That's not to exceed. We're probably right there. I, this is, that question came up before, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I'll just inform you that uh, when the ladder truck was repaired, it was the same type of rust, you know, doors, uh, mm -hmm. cabinets. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not the type of work that Andy Swift at Firefly Restoration and Hope does. All right. Okay. I see. Understandably. I see. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a little, yeah. little but different vintage. But if we could get Andy. Too. He does a little different vintage to he does. It's a much different vintage. Oh, yeah. It's great work, but it's oh, a little bit work. different type of work. Beautiful work. So do I have a motion to? So moved to... I will motion that Chris, um, the Camden Fire Department may be authorized to withdraw up to $25,000 from the Fire Department Reserve for rust mitigation and repair on Engine 5. Second. That was good. Any further well, discussion? That was, was right. All those in favor? All right, you got your withdrawing money only. Uh, what do you next, we're withdrawing for potentially upgrade the public, not upgrade, repair of the public HV, public service HVAC system. It's not public service. Public safety. Now you're doing what? I don't think service and safety are the same thing. No, it's because that's what's called okay. Rockland, the public service Sorry, thing. Sorry, you're going to Dave's the, uh, realm there, right? That's the same thing. City Council. <laughs> Chief, you, want, you want to talk about the talk about the HVAC? So the HVAC, the the, build, the public safety building was renovated in 2003 when the police department moved down. Um, there were a number of issues with the HVAC when the system went in. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of it, but uh, there was the the original vendor who installed it took over a year, tried to fix it, didn't happen. We have Thayer in the building now. They've been there for 14 or 15 years. Um, what we're running into at this point is just the, that, so that was 16 years ago now. There are seven rooftop units that are exposed to the sun and exposed to the salt air. They have a, a life, those units have a lifespan of 15 years. We're there and beyond. Uh, two of them don't function at all. They're turned off. Uh, they've been, they were turned off last spring. Um, and those are Happen to be in the, in the areas that mostly affect, I'm surprised he's not here, Chief Gagney and his crew on that side of the building. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Including his office. They don't have any uh, air conditioning, except for window units. Um, so we had a proposal uh, from Thayer to start replacing a couple of them a year. Uh, Bob and I met with the, uh, the project manager for Thayer today, and uh, we've asked them to look at a couple different things. So that's kind of where we're at. We're not asking... No, it's, well, it's premature now. It's going to take evaluation. The price tag might take bidding it also. But there are probably, potentially, one other option that might work. Were heat pumps part of that discussion? Sorry? Were heat pumps part of the discussion? Yes. Part of the discussion today. We, yes. They were part of the discussion last summer. Yep. Um, yep. We didn't really get a whole lot of traction with it then. And I think uh, in the conversation with Bob and, and the project manager from there today, we got a little more. There. So is the idea that he's going to come back to you with a more fleshed out plan for? He's going to come back with a couple options. He's okay. going to come back with the, with the one that we have now and, and the one that we talked with him today about, which included heat pumps. Okay. Actually, actually, they have heat pumps. They don't split heat pumps, just technically. But um, the advantage of split heat pumps is a phased, phased approach. The nice thing about the system that the building has is heating and cooling are separate. The, the heating part of the system could remain as is without modifying anything. And all the split heat pump would have to do is, even though it can do both, would only have to do cooling. So we'll have to see what they come back with. And then we still may have to think about bidding it out as a chunk of change. Do you have any idea what the cost will be? Oof. No, but we've budgeted 
thirty thousand. Yeah, and that probably that probably leads toward the discussion about heading heading toward a direction with solution over a couple of years. Phasing it. Yeah, phasing it. The thirty thousand that was budgeted was to fade was to do parts of it at right, and and that's, so that it doesn't all come due at the same time right. as well on right. the other end. Of the but you want to decide what direction you're going and then you head down that path. Right. So we'll, we'll probably know in a, in a couple of seconds, Allison, in a couple of weeks. Okay, Allison, go ahead. So this is all because the police department has to use window units for air conditioning. It's not all because of that, no. I we're, mean, I get that, but the, the major impact is felt in that way because I'm hearing you say that the heating system is still fine. Correct, correct. The heating system still works. The two heat pumps, that's what they're called, they're different, but they're on the roof, they're, they're dead. Two of the seven are dead, completely dead. Okay. So they don't, there's no cooling there. And so window they're getting by by using window air conditioners. Which window air conditioners wouldn't cover all of the well, that's area that needs to be covered. That's though, correct. correct. Two of the areas are we found today. We verified the uh, the what they call it evidence rooms. Yes. They're interior rooms. They don't have windows, so you can't use one either. So you're gonna have to put some in any event. And that happens to be the side of the building that's the hottest. Yes, it gets a direct sunlight. It's and it's just an accepted thing now that every warehouse have air conditioning. That's America. It's, I just, it's only America. So I don't think everywhere has America? it because Chief Whitehawk was in our building last week, um, and he was enjoying the fact that there was there was some in that building because I don't think they have any in the Rockland Bar oh. Station. That's interesting. It just seems like why are we giving into this that everything has to be air conditioned? I don't. I mean, I. That's the library. Well, I think we should point our, the finger at ourselves first before we go and like. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying I want everybody to be miserable, but. The other thing, police officers usually are wearing vests. They're wearing uniforms. They're, you know, there's a risk of, of heat stroke for He's going to say that. It's It's a serious thing in terms of uh, the, the safety of those folks. It's, of the it's, evidence room? It, I mean, they have air conditioning in their cars. They have air conditioning in any place with a window. I've just never heard a single police officer complain about it, which is commendable. I think but in I don't... terms of the evidence room, it's a question of maintaining the stability of whatever is stored in there. Like what? How long are we storing stuff in there I for? I look at the... Uh, um... I'm just curious. I'm, now I'm curious. There are instances in courts where they'll allege that the material wasn't stored properly, it was overheated, and is no longer valid evidence. How long are we storing stuff in the evidence room? Hey. Do we have, I, don't have, chief. Chief. I don't have access to the evidence room. Well, Do we room, have like a spot over here? The whole building but the evidence room. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the only two, it's not the only interior, there were a number of interior rooms. I want access to the I, I think we're room. only in the process of gaining information and, and price. Right, Bill? We can, we, can, we can still debate whether it's needed or not downstream, but right now, this is just an update of where it's at. We're looking at mm. getting some numbers in to see what it costs to do it and probably in phasing. And while we're at it, could we just, could, could we find out some time about the solar panels on the roof there? Absolutely. And because that was one of those things where it was like, oh, it would be a perfect location, but the roof isn't strong enough. Well, that's, one, that's in the Rough Garden report. Yes, I'm meeting Rich in two days to talk about sites. He's looking at those building. buildings again. Because if we had, maybe, that, maybe that would change the calculus for the appropriate system there. If, mm, that's it's a very correct. sunny spot. It is. It's extremely sunny. And why is that? I mean, I doubt the roof is that. Just you, can, you can reinforce it, trust me. It, it, it'll work. Solar panels will work there. But it, that's the electrical building was studied. Um, that's electrical energy. Probably 2014, 2015. I know, and they so. said, Gerling Dorsky, I think it was, said the roof possibly wasn't strong. Or is it revision? Somebody no, said the roof Ger wasn't strong enough. It was Gerling Dorsky. Yep. Also, was, and that was the conclusion, right? That was I'm not bus, mistaken. Bus barn, that. Bus barn also. What I've heard, I've never seen any report from them. Exactly, I was, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's, that's told, all. Yes. It, I've been told this too, and yeah. It's a structural yeah. engineer. We don't know. Whatever somebody right. says, I guess that's what. But that's electrical energy too. That's and what I was told. I never went any further. I don't know. We 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 met with the folks from uh, Revision, and yep. we walked around the building, and we planned out where where um, work. elements could go, and it'll work. Any idea how long I'm turn so around? So could we pick that out? Can we add that to what it you're studying? Is. Officially, uh, Jeremy is our as, oh, yeah. as, I as, as talking with him. Bus barn. 
a bus barn, public safety building, it's schools. It's all, it's all right. And we're not going to replace the heating system or the cooling system over there until we find, like, we would. Well, the, the cooling system wouldn't be affected by solar. What if it's elect powered by electricity? Well, then, then, then your electricity is going to still have to power the, the split heat pumps. So you still have to have put the split heat pumps in, which we're contemplating. So anything we put in is controlled by electricity? The only well, split heat pumps are a better energy user than what we have now, what they're proposing for the current current systems. Uh, that's, But it still requires power from something, yes. And not propane or? No, not propane. So anything we do there needs electricity, so yes. all the more reason to put yes. solar panels Absolutely. on Yes, Well, the whole building, we can power the whole building. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think all that's why this rough garden report is so important because it's resurrecting stuff that was kind of not swept under the rug but run, ran past too quickly. Right, like the public works area and the. Well, I think that building may actually fall barn, down. But. Uh, all, all those residential <laughs> facilities. That's, that was compelling. But. Yep. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's keep Thank going. No, sure. Say that with Dave here. <laughs> That's another one of those like reports have come out saying different things. Yeah, the bus I'm going to at least down. start before he hears this. <laughs> it's very nice over there. I don't scare him away yet. Well, we will revisit it when we get to the data from Thayer next, and 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 in rough parallel garden. rough garden report. But you just said we can put solar panels on there, so. Sorry. But you just said we can put solar panels on there, it. so. That's all I need. There's, there's, Actually, don't put that in the minutes. Um, <laughs> no, you actually. It's already can. been on the live stream. Actually, you can the live stream. Put it in there. Um, but yeah, let's, let's wait till we get the Thayer report and let's see. And then we have to decide too whether we have to bid this out because also there's also a. There are many split heat pump suppliers that are very aggressive these days in Maine. There are or are not? There are. Oh. There are. There are. It's become a huge business here. It's become a huge business here. Very huge business. A lot of small operations that could do that project. Anyway. All right, you. Thanks so much. Um, I think that ends the fire stuff, the fire drills. So we're on to appointing members to these list of committees, um, which we have here. But um, maybe the maybe we start with any committees that need membership or are, look, or are looking at change, because most of them I read here are not looking at any change right now whatsoever. Yeah, that's what I. But there is there is a conservation commission opening for one more member. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with that. We don't have any recommended recommended uh, people to be uh, I recommending think at this point. The word out. I, th I think they are talking to some people. They just haven't gotten okay. there yet. There's that's some right. people That's what I thought too. Um, but they're we just are supposed to do that too. We're supposed to advert. It says in our. Yeah. It says somewhere yeah. in one of those documents that we're guidelines. Mm -hmm. No, I think something even more official than that, like that we have how committees are. I think we have to. Do we advertise? I think we're supposed to advertise in. Yeah, we never have. No, we've we've advertised. Yeah. Oh, how absolutely. I originally got involved. So, oh, yeah. That's the, why on, we got th the, almost thirty. Not, not like for committees. Not like on annually. On not the, on the website. Mm -hmm. No, and they, and they, and the. That's uh, how you got involved this year. No, with the when I originally went on the uh, the opera house committee, it was through an advertisement. You know, in the paper. Mm -hmm. Well, did we do that this year? I have no idea. <laughs> well, anyway, we do I mean, especially I know with we do a lot, but lots that have been particular, like when we have a committee that's it's been particularly hard to find members, we'll put an advertisement in the local. Yeah, paper. but I think we're supposed to do it like every. I mean, I could do. I could. There's a lot I could do to advertise it. I'm not saying we so didn't, do we, do but maybe we could table this until. Whatever you want to do. I, mean, I would second tabling. Oh. Can I ask one, one favor? If you have to. Planning board? Yes, you can be Adver the chairman. So, <clears throat> um, the three people. Richard Bernhardt is a regular member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He um, wants to become an alternate. He is. Um, he's just looking to take a step back from this, and he and Mark Siegenthaler um, have agreed to swap alternates for regular members. Um, but that's good for Mark. Alternate Richard's a good regular team. member. Richard would like to become the alternate, and Mark would like to become the regular. That I think we can do. But Ethan Shaw says he's, he expires in 19. Mm -hmm. Does he run, want to be updated? I hope so. Oh, he does, yes. He's, oh, I see it's there. Yeah. Rosie, Ethan, and Mark Siegenthaler is alternate, and Richard's transitioning to an alternate, so that gives you a full boat. No, I'm but, still down an alternate. 
Let me just need three. One alternate. Um, two. Uh, two alternates. Mark Siegenthaler will will take Richard's place as a regular member. Mm -hmm. And um, Richard, goes to, an Richard goes to the alternate, and I'm still down an alternate. Right. Okay. We've what, been down an alternate, though. So what are you looking to approve? Just for you to swap Richard and Mark um, alternate and regular okay. memberships. All right. So moved. Thank you. Hey, can I ask a question? Why are we tabling this? We can we can okay the people that are wishing to continue now, and then look for well. New I members. think what what the contemplation the same situation in historic resources. Well, the contemplation is, and I would kind of agree with it. If we're going to open up committees to membership, we should tell people the public should know. I mean, yeah, uh, the, the, the quintessential example is the Harper okay. Committee when we. We, uh, we reconstitute, we advertise, we've got 30 people, admittedly probably an aberration, but 30 people who are interested in being a committee. The point is that there are others who are interested oh, okay. in being these committees or not, and I think we should advertise for that. True. I mean, you also, like on CDEC, for instance, Lehman is up, um, and he's, he's up. He would like to be renewed. I think he submitted paperwork. And he's our chair. And he's the chair. Yeah. It's also showing him as an alternate. We could... Um, what are you saying? They're mistakes? I, I would move that we table this to the August 6th meeting. I, um, that, whether we need to Jeremy yeah, Is that enough time? We should do it. Maybe we table it to the second, second August, week. the August, which would be like August 20th or there okay. and about, but the second August meeting um, with the understanding that we will take Jeremy's recommendation regarding the planning board. Right now. Um, right right now. now. Okay. And table the rest of it until right. the second August meeting, which We're I believe is the 20th. For that. Second. All those in favor? That's good. Right, five, zero. And I'll work on trying to get other names out there for you well, to I, get I on this. I presume we're going to put on, on the website that committees are being, this following list of committees is being named on August 20th. If anybody's interested, raise your hand. I, put, I would also ask Jenna to use her, um, like, knowledge of communications to maybe I write something up. There. and Maybe I'll do a little press release for us or yes. something. Yes. Okay. This town yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Table. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's at least every committee has a few that are whose terms are expiring, so we can just put something out listing all the different I, committees. I, I and think every committee should encouraging be encouraging interested. Every, every committee shouldn't apply. because you're on a committee shouldn't be an automatic upgrade. I was so hopeful the other night when we last meeting when this place was just packed that there are people who will take an interest in certain aspects right. of the community when they have the opportunity to do so, and I just right. think it's important to make sure they know they have the opportunity. Right. 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 Them, that agenda I'm so table with the exception of the change to the Thank planning you. board. Sure. Also, in the past, we have talked about <laughs> having people do a fill out something. You know, you rather something. than just I, I know that what and I don't think this is their fault because you know what went out to them is just something that said let us know if you want to continue. It didn't say fill out an application, but I I do think it makes sense. Every you know a lot of these are are three year terms to have some everybody oh I don't know that I, I don't it's know not true, very difficult yeah but if they've been doing the work we're asking them to do work and ask him to do basically busy work after they've been doing it's the not work busy work it's years. actually informative when I read things about what people are doing and why they want to be on committees and it's not it's not like everybody's really spending a long time on these anyway but to say why they want to continue on a committee, I don't know a lot of, you know, some of the people I don't necessarily know. And what if we do get people that say that they're really interested? Say we get, you know, four new people for the design team that want to be on there. And they've written applications and it's compelling stuff. How are we going to then, we're just going to say, well, these are the people that didn't have to do one. I, I mean, well, I'm not doing it to put, I'm, I think it's a useful, I know, but it, it is every sure. three years to ask them to just fill out something. Is, Why don't we wait and see what we get in for applications? And it's going to be awkward at that point to then say, well, we've gotten some competitive applications, and so now we're going to go back to everybody and... We kind of did it with the Harbor Committee to an extent. I mean... It, I, well, that was I don't agree that's, right that was a little different situation yeah, than I don't agree with it. asking people that have been putting in a lot of work for, you know, because I know all the people and all the committees that, that I go to, and I can speak knowledgeably about all of them and, and the recommendations. Um, well, not, every, not everybody everywhere. They're, they're mostly good committee members, but there are actually committee members in the world of all Camden committees 
that are kind of like, Meh, you know, and it's better not to, it, to just automatically. It shouldn't be a blank check. It really shouldn't. It's not that hard to just fill out something every three years and say, this is why I want to continue to be on the committee. Well, and I actually think it gives them an opportunity to talk about the work they have been doing and why they're a valuable asset to the committee. Right. And I mean, it's a, a very low bar if you've ever looked at any of the like other committee that, applications. And they, all the applications are kind of weak. Let's, yeah, all let's of them. get the advertisement into the, uh, um, um, but I, I, I think it's, Sorry, we, I should, think it's we should probably inform committee chairs that they should encourage their people to submit something if they want to continue on and why. It doesn't, there's no reason why they shouldn't. If they're interested, that shouldn't be a, we're not talking about a treatise here. We're just talking about a, a brief statement. And I'll also see what Janice has on file, because she keeps yep. really good records and there's yep. a good likelihood that maybe yep. their original applications are somewhere yep. that we could. Yep. <laughs> yeah, to spare them the hardship of. Writing two sentences. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, if I, like, if I, Imagine you're running for the select board again and just being like, well, I'm already on there. I'm not going to say anything. Like, that's the same. I mean, that's not what you're doing next year. <laughs> like, like us. that's not what we expect in any other arena when you make a commitment to something and you want to continue to be, you know, you want to be selected again, except for that is apparently how we deal with the I, MMA executive I, committee. I, but um, the one thing, the one I, thing I would say about it, one, I, I, I need to tell people I will not be here on August 20th. I'll be out of town. So I will miss that meeting. Uh, but number two, I can move to September. We ask we ask people to yeah, to volunteer their volunteer their time. Yeah, I agree and with that. And finding volunteers is harder I, I, than ever. I agree with that. And you know, creating busy work for people that have been doing you know a job, it just it just doesn't ring ring through to me. Well, this, I mean, at least read the guidelines, the new guidelines, and say that they agree to the guidelines. Yeah, I agree. Like that, if that you're re-upping, that should be you, done. No, but if we do done. get really good applicants, are we are we putting the word out right now that don't if you're if you want to be on one of these committees that already has people like we will never we're not considering changing anybody on there like if these people want to do it forever, tough luck for anybody else I, that wants to be I involved. Is should, that what we're saying? I, I would I would be interested to see how many applications we. I have. would too. First okay. of all, we're going to move this till September until you're back. Okay, okay. Thank you. Well, that's fair. You're on a bunch of committees and we want that input. Get the advertisement out, but as a minimum, I think anybody that's up for a re-up re this year needs to have uh, brought something in that attests to having read the guidelines. They have changed, and it's amazing to me how many people, and I've told some chairs to get them out, they haven't read them, and they still don't get it. We're trying to make this a little bit more efficient for their benefit. Um, because we don't want them wasting any time, you know, that kind of thing. But, and we'll start there. This, this is a process we're working on, including the next thing with liaison. Um, I think that's also we're working on. And I think it's, it's just, we won't be able to do it all, all in one shot. Let's keep at it, though. I agree with that. They aren't, they aren't blank checks. Um, we, it, I think a person being on a committee for 20 years is a good thing and a bad thing, you know. Um, so, but you got to be careful with that. If, to Mark's point, if there's interest, you're probably going to find out that the interest is moderate at, at all. If at Especially all. depending on kind of how we bill it, too. I just have some clarification. So now is it tabled till September? The first, uh, the first meeting in September. Okay. What, I think that's the third or something. I don't. It's the first Tuesday probably after the Labor third. Day. It's or a, the, it's the what? second or the third. Tuesday after Labor Day. Uh, yeah, I think it's like the third or something. I'm not sure. Um, next, it's two it's sheets now. We're two sheets to the wind. Um, We'll do that. And we'll just right now get the advertisement out and, and a requirement for anybody's sign. What is it? September 3rd. 3rd. September 3rd. Um, and we'll get, there's going to be a requirement that you have to have read the new guidelines mm -hmm. before we make the September 3rd thing. All right? Um, two, the next one, which is liaison. Oh, there's no reason why we can't go through this list at this point. It gets, so to me, it's a little confusing because we have a bunch of them where we have two people on it and a bunch with one people it's on it. And some that are, and, let's and some, this too. Okay, <laughs> I'd like to throw it away. And I um, also want to be on, the library board is not on here, which is. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. <laughs> Don't forget that. Well, I mean, I just think, the, I think we, we, no. we can table it to the same it's date, for the same, same date, um, but I think we are, I'd, I'd suggest oh. you all think about is, you know, there's, we have listed here, yeah, to me, the, the liaison thing should be some degree of rotation, because otherwise it would also create stagnancy voluntarily of course when um 
they have uh, myself and Taylor on the Harbor Committee, for example, will stay that way probably. But I, I would probably let Taylor take the lead with that for a while and fill in when he can't make it or just fill in for interest. I think we should do the same thing with other committees to, to bring a little different. Jenna's perspective from mine is totally different. You know, she knows how to write English, I don't. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I think, but I think that brings a light to a, to a committee that can be helpful to have if we had two names or even rotate a little bit. I think it's going to help the committees to be more proactive with the select board. Um, I have a way of doing things, and I shouldn't. I don't. I don't press that on the committees, but they, I'm sure they detect that management style. Allison, the same thing. You have a certain degree of information she likes, she likes to delve into, and that and that's, she should be encouraged. I think it's pretty subtle, though, with Allison. Yeah, it's I, <laughs> the committees. Honestly, it's it's overwhelming for some, some of them. I even want to be involved in, but I just get too. It's too much for everybody. I yeah, think, I, 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 I don't. I don't well, know how. Just think about. I think it. if we it's table it and give it there. some thought, that's I, I, a really I'll smart just say right now, I'm not about to rotate around and be like, okay, I'm going to start going to some different committee. I don't have time for that, and I don't okay. think I'll be very helpful. Uh, okay. I do That's... really like being able to watch the, the videos now oh, videos, yeah. when I get okay. around, you know. All right. But I can't commit to any more committee stuff. It's okay. That's fine. That's fine. I, and I don't. I think in, that's, in some that's, cases it's just like now we have a staff yeah, person I, was, that can do it. And yeah, yeah. But you have, yeah. You have, I still somebody will tell me. I don't. Thought process. Last time we changed it, but I went going. Yeah. So we'll table. Think, to, yeah, table to the third. Think about if you have any recommendations of how we can make liaison more effective. That's all the question is. Okay, where will we do it? Okay. Uh, singles fine, doubles fine, whatever you think about. But we'll table until. The third. Or do we even need a liaison all the time? That's what? that's another question. It's just another it, question. Uh, I think it depends on how effective the committee is. And who gets to also? Do we are we going to assign staff liaisons? Like who gets a staff that's, liaison? I don't and who think doesn't? that's. I don't think that's really the select board's job to assign staff liaisons to committees. Or a policy about like. Well, the committees work for the select board. Right. So that should be. But why um, do some committees have yeah, they staff be, like, yeah. or maybe you can tell it like you're. Right. I mean, I feel like that that's kind of what I would do. And I think that this is something that really, there was no hard or fast rule to it over the years. It's Ever. just some of them, you know, like the planning board, of course, they're going to have know, the they get it. planner, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So they should be elected, probably even. I don't even know. It's weird. It's weird how we just do the planning board like all the other committees. But yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, and there's some. It's it's like a pretty obvious fit. But then there are others where, um, you know, they don't have a staff liaison, and I think that, you know, it would it be best if they did just to have somebody, who's paying attention to what they do and can provide yeah. help when they need it. And there are others maybe, you know, maybe there's somebody else on staff who would be better placed to. Yeah. Look at the committees because, yeah. you know, I do have people like yeah. Jeremy. He's got a pretty heavy committee load. and I think Everybody's going to want Jeremy to be, go to all their meetings if that's possible, but we can't. Like, well, that's because he's part, of, he's part of operations and get things done. And well, I mean, day, so much of what they do has to do with planning and policy. And so, of course, somebody whose job is planning and policy related is yeah, going to naturally be involved in it. But I, I think there's a way that we can spread it more evenly and, I think so. and look at that. So, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet with the department heads pretty soon we can go through and revisit that and then let you all know okay, cool. what it looks like it's gonna you could also tell us sometimes like I don't I don't see a role for a select board liaison here or I think you could be helpful yeah. Allison here and not here or maybe I mean this you is know, an area where you just let staff do it we see their agendas this. and maybe there's something that there'd right. be interest on behalf I know the select board be interested so I can let the liaison know that this might be a good meeting for you to pay attention to or attend or like a different one of us if it happens to be a yeah. I think it's absolutely I think it's important to make sure that um, committees stay on their work plan. Oh but I'm not good at that, so you like, I know, but I don't know how you do it without a liaison on or someone, staff or a liaison from the select board on that. Yeah, but they but they have to they have to draw the line on that. They that's do the, that's the issue. And that's when, that's gonna be really important because since the committees are a creation of the select board. It gets really awkward. Like, really? Staff can't play that role of um, we can help guide them, but we can't be the ones telling them what they can and can't do. Right. And I feel like often staff are put in an awkward position well, where yeah. you have some yes. that are deviating from what they know are priorities of the select board, but it's they're not in the best position to rein in. Right. I mean, I'm dealing with one. There's one right now that you'll probably be advised right. of soon. <laughs> of a committee that's going down a road that the select board hasn't yeah, it, let them go it, it, down it, it, and I think they need to be yeah. pulled back a little bit. Yep. I, I, then there are times when I also just want, it's like if 
staff think that this is a I don't want to tie everybody's hands if you guys think well, it would be great if the committee could just work on this a little bit if there's something actually useful then for, we don't want to come back and be like well the select board didn't approve that but Audrey and Jeremy both thought it was a great idea so that I mean that happens. I mean I feel like that's that works communication out fine. between yeah. you know the staff and me and then all of you I agree and I, I you know and I'm not saying it's always perfect but I think that we all talk enough that yeah. there's you know, I'm not saying I think you do a really through, good job, but, but I just don't want to make it harder for you. And you should tell us when we do. I feel like I think we've worked out a pretty good mm. feeling of what, you know, what your priorities are, what um, what we need to do to implement them and how we can help direct committees mm -hmm. in that way. Part of what we can do a little better is we next month we'll have two more committees coming to us for work plan presentations. We need to be fairly crisp on approval and disapproval of work plans. I think we've been a little bit too. Great. I agree with that. I think that, you know, and this is, I think it was part of just it being a new thing for Evolution. everyone. Evolution. You know, like you said, everything looks important at the time, but it's more of saying, you know, those, those five things are great, but we really want you to work on these two. Exactly. And, right. and if you've done these two, don't feel compelled to meet Every month. unless you have something I, I that's agree. really I important. Agree. I would agree. Hold on. So that's the biggest thing is everybody feeling like they have to meet Looking regularly when sometimes there just isn't. Mm -hmm. It isn't necessary for them to. So, so are we having those presentations in lieu of the submitted work plans? Because I, I guess I didn't know that when, at, like when the Conservation a, Commission was here, were we approving a work plan then? We were approving a work plan. I know plan. that was fuzzy yeah. in general, That's but. Right. Um, right. And, and, I mean, the work plan, the work writing? plan when it's submitted, it's submitted in our packet. And the, and, the, and the board or commission or, or it, the work plan is in our packet. They are looking for direction on their work plan from the select board when they bring it to us. That's the purpose of it. Because that was sort of like an update on the work plan. In some cases, then, it, some I cases guess we're already at a whole new year. So. In some cases it was, but we've been, I think in the past when we've had work plans of all the committees, it, it, I think it overwhelmed us. It was, yeah, it was too much. So, so, that, so we're trying to do, and tell me if you think all think this is the wrong way to do it, that's fine, but to bring the committees at least once a year, if not more, to the select board to say, okay, w first, approving the work plan, the second time will be accomplishments on the work plan. What have you achieved on the three things we agreed you should be working on? I mean, I'm simplifying a little bit, but. I guess we, since we're talking about this right now. Um, uh oh. Well, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, are there, are there any groups in particular you haven't heard from lately that you would like us to go back to and, you know, revisit the work plan and well, well we have two, present on it? We have two coming next month. Uh, one's going to be the Harbor Committee and one's going to be the um, Design Committee. And we'll, we'll figure out when those are. But there are others who also need to be scheduled in September. Yeah. Is that, and I'm, I'm concerned that without having things written that it's going to turn into well we we presented our work plan and that was approved because i saw that how, there was a little bit of confusion with the, the work plan will be in your packet to approve if you don't want to if you take a look at so it. we're going to start requesting oh absolutely and the work plan for the commission was in the in um as was energy committee was in the, the select board packet and when we had those meetings with those various committees to discuss work plan I know, but then it was there was a lot of confusion after the fact about what had been agreed to. Well, that's that's what I said. Uh, my first comment was I think it, we need to be a little bit more crisp about what we want, what the select board needs information on. Because that know, was just about the intern. That was just about what is the intern. The, you know, I agree. That's on the commission is a little bit different, but okay. on other ones, I think Energy Committee, for example, we just need to be crisp and say these are the top two or three things we want you to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need um, <coughs> committees. You know, hurting themselves by wasting time on things we don't think we need at this point in time. That can change. I mean, there are priorities to come up. That can change. But that's been the intent of the committees um, and boards and others coming through the select board to update their work plans of what they were proposed to work on, what we agree they should work on, and yeah, prioritizing them to a point also is very important. I'm just a little bit confused about the document that comes out of it, because sure. yeah. we've been referring back to these documents, and I didn't realize that when okay. we had these present, like when the when the Pathways Committee was here, mm -hmm. was that a work plan mm -hmm. approval? Mm -hmm. We didn't vote on anything. No, we well, we, well, we, we didn't vote to improve it. Maybe that maybe. What did we decide about priorities maybe, for like changing state maybe, laws or? Then, then, then this, that should decide that we should going forward we should approve 
the work plan when they come in that night. That night. That'll be our, that's our opportunity. That's our opportunity up. to approve it and say, yes, we don't think these four items are a priority. You can talk about them, sure, but these three are, and that's what, that's what we want from you. And we'll visit you in six months to, to determine how you're progressing. That was the intent. Maybe it wasn't. That's, I don't think it was as clear as it could have been. Obviously, if this confusion going on about what we're trying to do, I'm trying to help the committee so that they don't come come to the select board with something they've been working on, and we go, "Oh, uh, no thanks." And then I've had many chairs say to me that they work work hard on something, and then they get rejected by the select board. Well, we didn't even know you were working on it, or it wasn't a priority with the select board or the town. All right. So we, so we need a motion to uh, table both until September 3rd. I would make a motion that we table both committee appointments and liaison assignments until our September 3rd meeting um, with the contingency that we will advertise for interested parties to apply for committee slots. And existing committee members need to submit uh, 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 that they've read the, um, the, uh, the uh, committee guidelines. And with existing committee members yeah. um, affirming that they have read if committee they guidelines. Read if they want to read up. All right. Second. All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. On to um, the FY19 to FY20 carry forwards. Thanks, Sharon. All right. So Jody and I and um, all of the department heads have prepared this spreadsheet that lists all the carry forwards and a mm -hmm. description of them. Um, so there's quite a few, like there are every year. So. I think probably a better approach than me kind of listing each one line by line would be if you have any questions about any of them. No, well, I think, I mean, just the view from uh, 30,000 feet says that we're potential changing, but this hasn't been audited yet, so this could change. Yes. But that the net of increased revenues and unexpended funds from the expenditure budget netted 622 Six hundred twenty-three thousand dollars to the positive. Yes. Which bring would bring our fund back if this is audited and correct, would bring the three point nine undesignated reserve fund from three point nine to four point five million. Correct. Wow. Um, Keeping in mind, over this year, we are going to be spending about 900,000 out of that with about 630 that we're paying back to ourselves. Right, the net is only $300,000, yeah. not yes. much. Yeah. Um, which still, I mean, the good news is it gives us some, the good news part is was leeway going forward in terms of funding. The, the not so great news is we're still conservative budgeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I'd say that's, that's still correct. Um, I, I think that, um, Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Well, nothing wrong with that. But I mean, I was I was concerned um, when Jody and I first sat down to look at all of this because when we first started looking at it, um, we forgot to take out the um, bond projects. So oh. it looked more like close to a million. Yeah. And I was very concerned about that because that really would be um, yeah. verging on overtaxing people. And I, that's not that's not good. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, change to the fund balance this year, we, we did have significant revenue over what was budgeted. And a lot of that, um, because it's so variable based on, mm -hmm. you know, the local economy at the time, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's hard to do that. Uh, you want to be kind of conservative in that regard. So, yeah, um, yeah so I, I mean, I, I feel okay about where we're at. Um, yeah. And this is the number that that's 622. We show that to you really just so you have an idea of the impact of carry forwards, because of yeah. course, you know, we're not gonna recommend the same sort of list of carry forwards that we have above right. if we're in a situation where our, it could negatively impact our fund balance. Right. So really that's the purpose of this exercise is just to, you know, give you a list of the items we wanna carry forward and then let you know what our overall position is looking like as we, you know, end this finance, or the FY19. Um, is there a need to, um, there's no need to act on this at this point. Well, you, well, you do need to approve the carry forwards. Okay. All right. But sure. uh, unaudited carry forward. No, no. It's the, the fund balance is the only thing that's un, unaudited, but the carry forwards, you just would approve them like you do every year. I see. Uh, quick question. Do you know where the, 
the the income that you didn't expect mostly came from? Yeah, so there was um, about so um, 153,000 in um, yeah, licenses, permits, Receive. fees. A lot of that came from the uh, middle school project. Oh, so okay. way over revenued in um, Jeremy's department. Um, okay. You know, same thing, state revenues sharing was up a little bit. Um, vehicle excise tax. Yeah. That was up a little bit too. Do we expect more from the state with the change in? Uh, yes. So, looking at the current financial year we're in, mm -hmm. because at the time we didn't know what was going to happen, we budgeted about uh, I'm rounding, but about two hundred thousand in revenue sharing, and it looks like we're going to bring in three hundred thousand in revenue sharing. So already, in our current financial year, we'll have a hundred thousand dollars worth of unbudgeted revenue. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Nice that they're contributing again. Um, what, um, go ahead, go, Alice, go ahead. What's contingency? Why, are, why do we have fifty nine thousand in contingency? That's there? your that's the select board contingency that was unspent. We used it. No. Mm -hmm. no. No. That's for our party. Um, <laughs> we talking about snowball. They use some of it. So you, it about. hasn't been, but it hasn't been spent at this point. So even though you've allocated some of it to a project, it hasn't been spent. So unless you carry it forward, it's going to go back into the unassigned fund balance. I, I, yeah, I just definitely sense. understand that. But I feel like we use bits and pieces of it for different things over the. No, I mean, I think that going into, you carried a little bit forward from FY18 to FY19. And then you spent out of it. And then when FY19 ended, that's what you had. We've approved. Available to carry forward into FY20. Okay. Um, what about why aren't we carrying forward this Montgomery and Seabright dam repairs money? I'm a little confused as to why there's money there. But if there is money there, then why aren't we carrying it forward? Because we haven't done it. Right. That's why we're carrying it forward. We used all the Montgomery money for Seabright. There's, it hasn't been spent yet. There's carry forwards and from, from dam repairs. We haven't paid for Seabright yet? We, we have. I think we've been billed for the majority of that project so far. But it says we haven't. We haven't spent it, is what it says. It says eighty six thousand nine hundred ninety dollars for right. unexpended. Unexpended. So that's yeah, that's the amount that hasn't been spended so far, or that hasn't been spent so far. Mm. I mean, yeah, I don't know. it just doesn't make sense because price has been fixed for a while. I mean, I would have to ask about what's been billed for so far. Sometimes they don't. They don't I mean, go I'm just, right it doesn't, away. Does it seem like, does it strike you as like a little bit odd too? Like, oh, we, I mean, it's a reasonable question to ask, right? I, oh, sure. I mean, I think it's just, Absolutely. it's the fact that some of, some of these things, they can be behind with billing and. Well, it says we're not even going to carry it forward though. No, it automatically, because of the way that it's accounted for, it'll automatically be sitting in that same account that can be spent out of. But it says all the other ones say we're carrying. There's something in the carry forward line, and here it's not. Right. No, the the 1.154 million dollars. The 1.1 million dollars, which is the expenditure carry forward FY20, includes the uh, the 395,950 of carry forward on the bonds. That includes that includes that's inclusive in the one point. One five four. So, to to your point, and not carrying forward the monies from Montgomery Dam. Where the two hundred six hundred six six the six hundred twenty two thousand dollars comes from, revenues two hundred sixty thousand dollars, plus expenditures unexpended one point five million dollars minus the carry forward of one point one five four million, and the one point one five four million includes. The carry forwards from bond projects, and that doesn't that three hundred ninety five thousand, and that does not include anything from Montgomery Dam. 
I, I, I feel like you're getting the carry forwards Very and the, I'm, I think you're I'm getting, you're getting the carry forwards mixed up with the fund, the estimated fund balance. Okay. That's what's going on. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the spreadsheet to show you the change in fund balance. That's different than yes. the carry forwards. Yes. Okay. What, what I'm at, this is just to illustrate to you. Yeah. Yeah. How that's gonna? Okay. I just want to be okay. able to show you okay. that by carrying forward all this money, we're not yeah. Um, yeah. we're not putting ourselves in a bad financial position. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. We can clarify the Montgomery Dam one. That is quite. I don't quite understand it either. But um, there's that actual line. Well, it's unexpended. No, it doesn't. Unexpended. It is including the 1.5 um, of 86,990. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons for that. It could be that they haven't built us let's just, yet. Let's just get it could, answer, it let's could just be an that to it. that hasn't that yep. different sources of funding that yep. went into that project it hasn't all been. Yep. Um, we paid for sources I'm yet. Pretty sure with select board contingency, but um, I mean, I'm just saying there's a lot of different reasons why that could why that wouldn't be yep. unexpended at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but let's find out. Right. All right. But that doesn't have anything to do with the list of carry forwards okay. that they've given you. That's just to give, show you what our overall financial position is at the end of the financial year. Okay. How to... about like a little tiny thing after that? Um, that's just a, my own little pet project. Um, the, is, the, is the digitizing money, historic stuff, is that getting carried forward? Um, where, was, where is it? I think now, well, I don't know, because I don't, so what, all I can see is what is here. I can't see what isn't. Oh. So, and if the category, Actually, I don't think it is. So what you can do is you can approve this list and then we can come back next time and make sure that we carry that forward as well. We always, we seem to always miss at least like maybe three. So we have to come back and ask you to do the additional three. So that'll be one that we make sure that we okay. do carry forward. How about I see under committees, nothing being carried forward. I think I have a vision of being copied on an email that included a request to carry forward a balance from historic resources or something related to that. Um, yes, yep. Is that where that would be? Yeah, that there I think other it's on the planning that, and development line. So that would that would be all in that budget. What's the committee's line? It's in it's in the uh, general government budget. But again, those are oh. other ones that didn't make this list. So we'd bring it back when we bring back records digitization. We do the committee carry forwards. Okay. Um, now this makes me want to start thinking of all the other things. That <laughs> all the other things. I'm two for two now. No, two for three. Do we want to make a motion to accept this with the whatever um, we all think of? Well, with the, with yeah. the caveat that if if items come up that for yeah, select should, board we, approval, we, we, or do we, we want to table we, it? We've got to bring it to a. We got, we got to, we get, yeah, we're going to approve it temporarily for now for going forward. Mm -hmm. But I think what we should do is require a a revision to it on how soon. How soon do you think? Well, I mean, it, it, it doesn't really, all I need from you is that you've approved these yep. carry forwards. It doesn't really matter if it happens all at once or not. Yeah, because don't, it's, don't do it five times. It's really just so the auditor can see that you've done yeah, it. Yeah, we can approve this, but I think we should set a schedule of coming back with any revisions. Mm -hmm. August, September, you pick. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this has been the third year I've done this with all of you, and I think we, we yep. did it twice. Yeah, we did. We yeah. Did. So, so so let's approve this and then with the caveat that we would look at this again around August 20th. Sounds good. Now does this all, all these numbers that are proposed that they I believe that there's something in our charter that uh, rules about the percentage of the budget line that can be carried forward with a simple select board vote? There's, there's no rule that um, would that. prohibit you from Carrying forward any number of it, that's just transferring it between lines. It's not even a transfer between lines. But, um, there is a rule. The school board no Houston, more than ten percent. In I think theirs is five, and they've now they that's how they're paying for everything is five percent here, and but that's just the transferring between. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. 
let's move to do that and then to, and then an adjustment and but we don't want to delay it forever we still when working on it, it's hot enough fans we do need to find the two plus 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 ones that should be in here for a vision on august 20th so i would make a motion that we accept the carry forwards as presented um with additional carry forwards to approve august 20th there's a second i'm still kind of looking but yeah and for the discussion all is approved five zero okay good thanks andra um <sighs> website update we have we this is not the font, is it? what's that this is not the font is it i was th thank god i'm not the only one it's well, awful i'm well, sorry i like well, this is it's the thing awful. for everybody yeah. i'm going nuts because i'm not i need Asha, feedback she, i'll I, sit down and meet with you about and look yeah. at that i mean we've got to move it for, i don't see I can't, grunge font is one thing that just <laughs> for me i can't well I, I was i was looking more at the content not the font we well, don't care no, about no, content no. at this point. This, it's, this is only about design, so. We're just trying to get to the point where we can care about content. I, I, I am language. dying to get to the point that where it's about are. content. I mean, you and I are, but. So you want us to content? I just this, like, you want me to con comment on font? Good luck. Somebody's got to comment on I, it. I was, this, this I was going I to say the same right. thing, Jenna, did, hoping I wasn't the only one that thought it. <laughs> It's like it's, that T-shirt you never wish you bought. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wish you never yes. bought. Okay. But the second thing, upcoming city no events, the, the photo they used. Sort no, of no, don't, no, no photos. Just no photos. No photo. Don't comment on individual photos because so those things all can like be um, here. I want to get it up for everybody. Color, but. Colors, fonts. Um, um, your computer has to be connected. No, it doesn't. The major. I just turned off. how we're a town. Upcoming city events doesn't read properly. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I mean. I, I don't wrong. like colors, no fonts. <laughs> what, what, first, what's the deadline for, what's the timeline? I mean, really, like, it would have been nice to have had the design done probably about a month ago. There's, yeah. I mean, it's based yeah. on when we respond. And it I feels think this like, is the third can we, revision. Can't we just pull, pull aside a smaller group to carry this I was just going to say. A smaller group. I've tried that. I don't know all five is doing it. We have a smaller group already, and Audra sent out emails, and... I only want to see what the content is. I don't care well, about Then you don't get sorry. to wait. Then you don't say anything now. <laughs> about fonts? Great. You don't say anything about that. You, you talk say about whatever. fonts if you want. All right. If you don't like it. Yeah, but he content says he doesn't coming, want to. So. Well, I mean, it, to me, I'm content just really not, the, yeah. I'm not the graphic that? artist person. I just care about whether your person can go in there and find things easily about the town, about what tabs they're pushing on, how the, how the, the, the decision tree of the website map is set up. That's, yeah. That's what I care about. I'm encouraged by the idea of Jenna sitting down with you because we seem to agree. Yeah, me too. I, but I, what, I, what I think you could offer I'm to this, what would sure. be valuable is, do you like, you know, do you like, um, the things like the call to action buttons where they are and the way that the calendar events section is displayed and where it's displayed and news and updates and where it's displayed and how all that kind of stuff okay yeah I that's see. that's one of the things that's really assuming important the top now. bar under the camden harbor picture has a lot more stuff in it than just you know permits and forms and ordinances yeah i mean that's that's missing a whole bunch of stuff in my opinion to start me off on a site map on a on a um, on the, uh, oh, website. Yeah, because that's that's more content. They can change those things. I okay. well, this, this is format. That's discussion. my opinion. But this is a format discussion only. Because I was like the, Design the calendar. Format. Yeah, so, you know, I don't what? know why this thing keeps turning off. Like, won't doesn't like you. One thing I would say in the Explore Camden Live Work Play, I'd like to see visit there as well, because that Live Work Play just sort of talks to the people that are here. Oh, playing is for visitors. Not necessarily. <laughs> You don't play? I like to play. Yeah. I know the no, I don't. Actually, I'm bored. Yeah. I like to work. Well, I think visit is. Let's start with the basics, like. What? Town seal and like things that are going to be hard to change later. Um, color, like the major colors. Because we can change the words. We just, it's annoying to change the font across all. Right. You know, oh. later on. I my I I submitted comments. Maybe I should try to remember what I what I think I did. Um, but I don't like that you go there and it takes you a little bit to figure out. Am I really at the real municipal website? Or I know we're trying yeah. to be like cool and attract <laughs> people here and all that stuff, but 
going along with the grunge funk too. It just it, it should be have a level of yeah. I'm at the official town site, and I a little the, level of polish. The right? town seal. I don't have a problem with the town seal. I think maybe the problem is I think we have a few different committee members that that send their feedback privately or you know and they might not oh the town seal's outdated and so if you only get one comment then it's like well okay we're getting rid of the town seal and that made the one person that commented happy but is that why the town seal got I'm just trying to I was relegated to the lower very yeah. low. I'd but say that's part of it I, I'm just trying to figure out how do we get comments to what you're looking for in this select board meeting um, I, could... I I'm grasping at straws because okay. <laughs> that's honest <laughs> One thing I noticed in, in this first page, it has really mm. small little things for home government residents, businesses, and then these big blocks with agendas, mints, the same basic same type. And it seems way out of proportion for those big, huge blocks for and sort of shunts off the stuff at the top. There's, mm. there's no quality there between mm. what you're looking at. I hate to say it, but I feel like us like throwing in ideas at this I meeting is not a very efficient way to. I, think we should have a dedicated agree. I, to, I website. totally agree. Could we have a, a dedicated yeah. workshop for the website? Oh maybe? God! Well, that's Don't gonna to me, me it's gonna work a lot better than doing it like. Well, but, you, but you and I, I mean, you and I have to accept some level of responsibility because agree, we've been. I agree. We've been, but here we are having just like will will willy nilly sort of helter skelter ideas going around and well, it's just first of all first I just of all, want the town seal on there yeah, first, that's first all I care this about started out, oh, I agree with the you. title says an update on the yeah. website okay and then it's morphed into a discussion about fonts I'd say that's I'd say the update, update. Yeah, my update my is what I am stuck at a point where I can't move forward with building the website and inputting content until we've finalized the design and, and 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 define design what quality I would what? say I would say um, format format and um, format design so the format being like on the home page what's displayed how prominently is it displayed oh. is it unreasonable or atypical of us to ask for it give us four different options for what these look like uh, yeah that's a we websites is, is very a specialty and and I think I certainly agree with what Allison said about it. When you go, you shouldn't know you're into a town website when you're going in there, whether, whether that's the town seal and I don't know. But if you open this up to 15 people, you're going to get 15 different options, and the five is included. I think it needs to be, do we have to put a little bit more faith in you all? It's the content that counts and to me. It's what's, what's in it and ease of going through it that counts. You went through it in Rockland. I did. You know, and they went through all that stuff, and it's, Great, still, some people like how it looks, and some people don't. That's correct. That's never, correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Happy. One thing I'm surprised at is we hired these people because they were the experts at municipal websites, and this is sort of a surprise. The problem is us. Oh. So you can go on there, go on, go on Revise's website, and look at all the different things, and you can choose what you want it to look like. There is, they can. This is what a lot of people would choose. There's, you know, Paul Cavalli has been involved mm -hmm. too. There are different desires for the website too. Is it to, when you go on there, do you want it to be something that makes you want to move to Camden? Or do you just want to be able to find the agenda packet Shouldn't quickly? It, to to me, it's the agenda packet mostly and things like that. And I think the Chamber of Commerce can try to market to mm -hmm. new residents and we'll link to them if need be. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, it's not the company that's any problem sure, sure, and I think sure. well that's the thing they'll do whatever we ask them to do it's just that we and haven't really given them so shouldn't we started with those that criteria with some criteria for the website well, to we, them we, we did. did so if they, if they followed through on that in your opinion I mean they've done they what have, we asked them to do follow through the, so the problem is that some of us later on say what Audra's trying to avoid is you know honestly this website just the way it is would would be fine i could i can now that i look really carefully i can see the town seal a little bit and if i wanted to get it on there later whatever Th then but what we want to avoid is at the we're putting all this effort into like making sure the calendar app works correctly and choosing all of that stuff and then having everybody fuss about the font oh. when we unveil it oh. so it's kind of like speak now or forever hold your peace on what gets decided i love all the fonts that seems um, fair. And if we want it just to be like a font 
you know, anybody that wants to rush into Audra's office tomorrow and be like, yeah. change the font or this or that, I think cool. probably there's, she'd be really happy to have some. that are like, we don't think that we can move on with our lives if we don't have a grid calendar on the front page. Mm -hmm. This is the time to tell me. Oh, see, I feel that that's not, I feel that the grid calendar can be negotiated later. That, I mean, that was just a. Example. Well, I mean, on the front page, it really does. Do you do have that? to make that decision. The, the, the modules can change. You can switch out. I use that. No, no. The way that it's displayed on the front page, you need to make that decision now. I disagree with that. That's what I was told by the designer. I mean, you can still you can still link to one, but right. what's going to be shown on the front page? You need to make that decision. I see. Mm, you can you can pull in embedded HTML from any source. Maybe I I mean if if we that that doesn't make sense. There there. I think you need to speak to her about do, this. Do I, they, and this is I mean you know I'm kind of the main point of contact, and I had this discussion already with her because sure. somebody else brought that sure. up. Sure. And so she's like, well, you know, there's a there's a different ways that we could do it, but Let's you really need to decide. Pick what the you reason want. that we chose them was um, a lot of flexibility for yeah. us to be able to change things later. So right now, Jan, you know, even Janice on our website now, which is the worst, can choose to display things differently on the home page. It's maybe. Maybe we can all agree that, like, if I actually wanted to do something with that, I could talk to the lady by the end of the week and I, I, at this point all we can do is encourage anybody who has any comments on the on the format to bring them to you and also it, how are we going to do where are we going to put when, them. when we schedule elections we we move the calendar and we put the election stuff on the on the front where is that going to go well this is my point is that that's what it that is what the um any sort of events or um meetings will look like now it won't be a grid calendar it'll be like that if you go down yeah and i personally believe that we are sacrificing too much like front and center real estate mm -hmm. trying to profile camden as beautiful where it's like yeah i was just i don't need to see camden every single time i just want to yeah huge i picture. could lose the picture on the left on the upper and have i information mean even that there. doesn't but it's like this is a lot of space when you know, it's we, true. It's yeah. If it's, we could have some flexibility for like a banner up here that, as you said, this is a this is a chamber website. It feels a little <laughs> like that. Um, like you shouldn't. Yeah, I agree. And so, it's not a re it, like it feels a little bit like a real estate ad. We like right now. We can actually put something right at the very top of the website, and it doesn't look pretty, but it does. It's like. If in doubt, you just go there and it's like, yeah, you see it. And so some kind of like thing right up here that's maybe even like a square or a, mm. or if they have some model that's just less of a huge picture. Yeah, you can do that. Why not? I mean, that's. And then you can click on some other link that says like, you know, Camden Gallery or things that are, would lead you to all this really pretty stuff. And easily. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would like a few more words because sometimes people even get confused they, about having to scroll so much. There's yeah. a new, like that's that's become the new trend of just the continuous mm -hmm. scroll website. But it's not intuitive for a lot of people to just go and keep scrolling. You kind of want to be able to see like the main is uh, main menu. It seems like you need like concrete things to go back to and say, yes, this is yes. what we want. We do. And I think those should be written to Audra. Uh, fundamentally, from my perspective, I think the upcoming city events at the front calendar are extremely important. I think the news and updates, using this as a news source, extremely important, regardless of what size the pictures are. I think um, ex exploring Camden, that's, that's publicity. That's the third leg of the stool that I see here. And, and that's it. And everything else is going to be at the top of this website as I read it above the Camden picture that says things like uh, government, residents, business, visitors, you know, those are other tabs I presume it'll take you someplace else to do mm -hmm. other things. Um, whether those are the right things or not, I don't think we're there yet, but I think the format of it makes sense and I can't comment on font. But if anybody else has comments like that for you, they should submit them to you by, you pick the date. Also, I would really encourage everybody just to 
go on the uh, revise website revise.com click on projects mm -hmm. and you'll see nothing but a bajillion mm -hmm. municipal websites mm -hmm. that will give you Ideas. an idea of yeah. how other places yeah. are doing it and yeah. especially any of those are very easy that's a great, to, that's a great idea go um, because it's hard for us to envision no, I, I it, agree go ahead and revise when, when do you want these comments by I would <laughs> I think it would be great to have them by um, let's just say next Friday the, um, so that's um that's August that would be August third I forget Second. I forget the date. So right. 31 uh, Wednesday's 31 so it's August 2nd yeah thank you all right, that's what we'll do. And we just, just let's just all of us look at this with the eye toward uh, and look at revised.com. That's a, I'm going I'm to do that and comment on what, like I think I just did with and Allison did about uh, the major elements that should be on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to comment on font. That's not my expertise. Fair enough. I mean, I have a hard time with that one too. I mean, I, that's like asking somebody what color they like, you know. Yeah. And I also don't like the blue, the overuse of uh, blue. Camden uses this right. like deep right. forest green. We don't need to copy Camden National Bank on everything. And so select board, get like your comments, comments to Audrey so by. Um, and by others too, I guess, now that everybody knows. Well, Friday, we're, August 2nd, end of day. All right, cool. I'm happy to share yeah, that. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Dave, are we scaring you? <laughs> mm. Okay, just I'm just worried. It's like he's he's getting. You'll get used to it. I did. I'm I'm just worried. By the time we're done, he's going. Yeah, this oh my is God, not a city council, done. as you can tell. Um, oh, well, let's let's stop glorifying city councils well, first. I'm going to glorify. Just irritate let's, you. Let's like no, it doesn't. It's not all no, perfect no, where I, he came hell from. Hell no, it isn't. It's not perfect at all. There was. I, I think we've proven one thing in the world: there's no <laughs> such thing as a perfect government. But. Um, um, with that, we no probably perfect get, website. No, we need a motion to perfect motion website. to adjourn and move to executive oh, really? session. Do we adjourn as select board and convene as wastewater commissioners oh, under executive yes. session? No, no, do you no, want to do no, 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 no. Executive session is part of of, of not. We're not just executive session is fine for now. Do you want to do an executive? I think, I think Taylor oh, okay. did it quite went, right because. Well, because we're in an executive session, we're not going to go back to select board and, and go into executive session and select board. Oh, you think once we go into executive session, we should just go back and forth between wastewater and select board as much as we want? That's what you're going to do. I don't know. I, I don't think Mr. so. Mr. Kelly, what do you recommend? I think you can go into executive session as both wastewater commissioners. I agree. And so I agree. I think so, too. I agree. For the same under the. But the they're different. Issue, yeah. The same issues, yeah. Uh, what, okay, one I see. Right. So, Taylor, revise your motion. A. I revise my motion that we adjourn as the select board and convene as select board and wastewater commissioners under executive session pursuant to 1 MSRA 4065E. Second. And, and 465A. We can do two at once? I don't know what A was. I don't See, that's I do. the thing. Is there two? I do. Yes. That one's performance review. Right. So there are different issues. Yep. That would have to be a second. Yes. Yes. All right. Good job, Tom. Everybody's right. Everybody's right. That's what. <laughs> All right. There's a second. Must be an attorney. Yep. In favor? 5 0. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Bruce. We're off.